Welcome everybody to episode 76 of the ADV podcast. So we're very happy to have you here today. And uh, again, a very important one this week. Today is called uh, China Beep Slaps Hollywood. And uh, I'll leave it up to your imagination to what that B word means. Absolutely. Anyway, let's saunter right into it with our um, what's new. So let's see. We talk about what's new in China. Um, and we've got a pretty interesting one to start out with today. Um, let's explain what's going on back here. So in Tiananmen Square, uh, a bunch of students got murdered. Thousands, tens of thousands of students got murdered by I don't the... Know if it's uh, tens of thousands. 10,000 students. Okay, there's a lot up, of... St- up to 10,000 students to, got murdered. A lot of people got shot by the military. We know that. But... It's also just a square, right? When you say Tiananmen Square, most people are thinking of the massacre. It's actually just a massive square. People, uh, you know, go see the the China, the Beijing, the the central government's presence of Beijing. It's a huge, massive square. Winston and I have walked around there a few times. Big mm. security presence. Yeah, there. you know, you see that picture of Mao, Mao the murderous Mao Zedong on the wall there. Yeah. Everybody thinks that's Tiananmen Square. That's actually actually the entrance to the Forbidden City. Yes. The square, you can see it. Yeah, you can see it from the square. The square itself is where you see these people standing. And it was right. specifically built to be the biggest sort of public open square for the, the sole purpose of making you feel insignificant. That's right. That's the whole point that's, of it. Yeah, and that's a communist thing. Yeah. Uh, we noticed that at Ho Chi Minh Square in yeah. uh, the Ho Chi Minh Mausoleum in, in Hanoi, in mm-hmm. Vietnam. Yeah. Also very depressing makes you feel like you're no one yeah like nothing depressing and they have the Mao jerkies also Mm. you know just off the square as well where you can go see see Mao's jerky see Mao's the the embalmed version which is a cheap knockoff of what they did to Lenin yeah didn't some dude get the death penalty for two no, that's, or is that that's a, just a rumor. A, okay. that's a rumor. <laughs> Something popped yeah, up the yeah day, that's so. a stupid rumor. Anyway, um, yeah. in this square, they do the uh, flag raising ceremony every day. Yeah. So the PLA goes out, and these are hand picked PLA guys. It's not like some dude from southern China, like Hunan or something. And these are hand picked dudes. And they go and they throw up the flag, and then it goes up, and they're like, yeah, welcome to the new day of the CCP. Yeah, it's kind of an event. You can go watch yeah. it in the morning if you want. You can stand there, obviously, and uh, lots of people do it. I've done it, and uh, it's just is what it is the flag raising ceremony it's a big nationalistic thing yeah so what this does is attract uh tourists from all over china it is the thing to do like my wife when she was a kid their family's not particularly nationalistic or anything they're cantonese so they don't really give a shit about beijing but because they're chinese you go to beijing to To see it at least once right yeah. So you go there and she, you know, is packed up, they packed up the train and they went up there to, to visit. And every, pretty much every Chinese person with the means will go visit Beijing. So you're talking about millions and millions of visitors sure. every year. Yeah. So they go to see this flag raising ceremony and of course people whip out their phones. But in this particular flag, flag raising ceremony, there was uh, a, a, an unwanted guest that yes. showed up. Yes, so we're going to show you now. Now you see they do this whole yeah like you know fail, <laughs> you fail. oops he must he's gotta watch out that guy he's, yeah. he's gonna have a reprimand <laughs> yeah so yeah you can see there's tons of people come to take photos but on this particular day there was a black swan now yeah. first of all it shows that occasionally there are birds in china Ooh, proof yeah but it's very seldom and it's always like you know one here and there that's managed to escape from a zoo or fly in from a bird wetland or something wetland, yeah. from a different country or whatever <laughs> like yeah. russia yeah probably yeah. came from anyway now all jokes aside there are significantly less almost no birds in the wild in china in the cities anyway and in the wild it's very kind of scarce as compared well. to other countries yeah because yeah, they're over over hunted and stuff like that and of course you've got other, other factors like pollution destruction of habitat all that kind of thing but anyway uh, all jokes aside, there was a black swan. Now, <laughs> this is not a good thing, okay? Uh, you might wonder, like, why it's not a good thing. We'll explain that in a minute. But um, to have a black swan turn up in Tiananmen Square at around the flag-raising ceremony time is is a big no-no. It's a very, very bad omen, mm. right? It's not a Chinese omen, no. which is interesting. This is a Western omen. Mm. So you'd have to look up what a black swan actually means. Well, a black the, swan event. And a black swan event actually means. But mm-hmm. China does take superstition very seriously, mm-hmm. right? So it doesn't matter if it's a Chinese omen or not. The fact that it happens is like, holy shit, especially where it happened. Yeah. Uh, in one of the most significant, politically significant places in the whole country. Yeah. So this uh, this thing showed up, this black swan showed up, he's just chilling, 
Normally, people would just leave it alone. No, don't worry. They took care of it. They, uh, <laughs> they took care of it real quick. Yeah, they got they got it out of there, you know. So they called like animal control. Yeah. Now, normally, animal control in China is just cops killing the animal. That's most of the time. Do you yes. remember that time when they got rid of their like the anti stray dog campaign? Yeah, and they, they just, just murdered beat, all, beat all the, the dogs, dogs to death. in yeah. the streets. Yeah, that you guys don't. You can look it up. Look, it you up. can look it up. But that's something that a lot of people just refuse to acknowledge. They had a campaign where they legitimately drowned and beat up all the stray dogs. Yeah, beat all the dogs to death. Even and like, some of them were pets. Yeah, remember that homeless guy had a pet dog and they, yeah. he was still holding the leash and they beat it to death in yeah, front of in him. Front of him. Yeah. yeah, that happened a lot. Anyway, that was, that was like millions of dogs and cats. To be born an animal in China is like a serious problem. Anyway, we're looking at an article over yes. here. Okay, well, let's, uh, don't want to spoil it. Okay, so she focused... Okay, sounds like a fantastic article. It says, she stresses implementation of new development philosophy in the next five years. It's always a five-year plan with communists. You'll realize that. It's always five years. Anyway, this is a document in Xinhua Net, and it's talking about, like, boring political five-year plan stuff. Yeah, you would normally pay attention. This came out in January. Yeah, in January of 2021. But there's something very important in this document. If you look here, um, where does he say? Stressing, stressing, stressing. stressing. Oh, okay. So I'll read this, uh, this paragraph out to you. Stressing the need to ensure both development and security, she also urged contingency planning for black swan and gray rhino events to boost the security of China's development. Mm. So there's actually an article where he's like warning about black swan events. Now, black swan event is when something that's something happens like a disaster, usually like a natural disaster. Or something, something unknown. Something unknown because... It was thought way back in the day that to see a black swan was kind of an impossibility and it was just a yeah. freak of nature to see it. Some people say that that's actually a white swan and it actually just flew through the Beijing air long enough. <laughs> yeah. I have my own theories. <laughs> I mean, like we both we both spoke about this and we yeah. believe someone planted it there. Absolutely. Someone just is, you know, to, in order to... Make a statement. It's a political statement. It must be sure. a political statement. They just Probably anti xi statement and not necessarily yeah. pro... Uh, not pro democracy. Mm. We're talking about someone that's just. There are factions within the CCP that hate Xi Jinping. Yeah. Um, currently, the southern faction, the ones with all the money that want free trade and that keep yeah. getting screwed over by Xi Jinping, they're not very happy with no, him right now. No, of course, and all these billionaires and all these. There's some weird officials. stuff happening right now. They're not happy, but anyway. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, Xi Jinping had had talked about not wanting a black swan black swan and gray rhino whatever a gray rhino event is i don't know what that is let me look that up yeah please look it up but he warned about this in a speech in january and guess what a black swan arrives in tiananmen square at the, the flag- most yeah. politically significant place. yeah at the flag raising ceremony so um, not a good omen a gray rhino event is a highly probable yet high impact neglected threat okay so akin to both the elephant in the room and the unforeseeable, improbable black swan. Black so swan. it's the opposite of a black swan. It's it's an event that um, is probably going to happen, but can be for prevented, right. right? Whereas the black swan events like comes out of nowhere. Sure. Holy shit! Smacks you upside the head. Kind of like what's been going on in China recently with flooding and all these yeah. other things. So mandate of heavens type stuff. Now yeah. the, the, it might not be a Chinese uh, omen, but the fact that he used this this terminology means that it's in the Chinese zeitgeist. Yes. And the thing that they're really worried about is the mandate of heaven, which we've talked mm. about before. It's when a huge natural disaster happens, it signifies the downfall and the end of a dynasty. Yes. And the CCP is a dynasty. Well, I mean, if they were following that, they would have fallen a long time ago because yes. of the Sichuan earthquake, for instance. But they the don't want people to know the, about the actual yeah. severity of That's, it. And that is COVID too. Yes. I mean, that is why the CCP and the Chinese government actually does not release reliable numbers. When it comes to death tolls of uh, like flooding, for instance, like we saw that tunnel where thousands of people Mm. must have died in that tunnel. Yeah. And they said like three. Yeah. And they still haven't released any updated figures. No, it's done now. Yeah. Now you'll never hear about about it. it. It's not in the news anymore. That's why they do that. Because if data was released that was accurate about the deaths from coronavirus or from the flooding, or from an earthquake, or whatever, if it was a significant number, which it always is, then it would look like it's a mandate of heaven. It would look like it's the gods saying it's time to move on to a new dynasty. It's time for the Correct. CCP to step down. So they don't allow those numbers to go out. And that's why you can never take their official data seriously, because they always change the numbers. Anyway. So that's where we're at with that. Um, there's some memes that came out about this. Yeah. The Black um, Swan event here. I quite like that one, actually. Yeah, he's ripping down the Mao. Yes. 
cracking. Oh, man. The day that my bloody portrait goes away will be the happiest it, day of my life. The Forbidden Kingdom and the Temple of Heaven, all that stuff's really beautiful and awesome. Yes. Imagine if and it it's was got returned, nothing to do with communism. No, imagine if it was returned to not communism yes, and yeah. just Chinese culture. Yes, it would be wonderful. Um, someone suggested sending the tanks in to take care of the black swan in Tiananmen yeah. Square. I mean, I wasn't surprised. The thing is, when they overreact like that, like the cops... I didn't include this footage because literally if I show a cop like touching someone like this, the yeah. YouTube will demonetize They, they it. do. They always do. This channel always is Unless it's like American but, uh, cops beating people up, then it's that's like... That's fine. You YouTube can't show... puts it to the front For page. some reason, you can't... <laughs> sh yeah, you can't show... Uh, I found this out. Yeah. My video that i did about student protests yeah i only showed scenes where the cops they were very brutal by the way yeah. i only showed scenes where they weren't being brutal they're yeah. like stand back you know that yeah, guy's yeah. chinese police it got demonetized yeah then it got age restricted so you have to have a youtube account log in say yes i'm 18 yes. to watch it and then it was removed from all recommendations yeah because i showed chinese police officers like pushing people I had the same thing with my chinese police brutality yeah. video where i showed it but i censored everything it's yeah. because yeah me too I guess China can can do nothing wrong. Yeah, barely. If, if you try to show it, hey man, you know, something wrong with you. Anyway, so a couple of memes about the black swan, uh, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, hey Tian -er, as yeah, they would hey, call yeah. it. Hey Tian, you know what's interesting? I would be interested in yeah. one of my favorite uh, Dongbei restaurants, so northeastern food restaurants yes. in Huizhou, where I used to live. It was right next to the gym I used to go to. It was called Hey Tian -er. I used to meet my friends there every week. It was like our... Instead of like church, it was our thing. Okay. <laughs> We'd always eat there. And I wonder if that name has changed. I think it would have by now. Yeah, yeah probably. definitely would have I'll have to now. look it up. Okay, so we got a treat for all of you guys. You know how we like uh, wraps? You all, CC, we love CCP our CCP wraps. wraps. CCP so wraps. let me set this one up. Yeah. So we found another one. You guys this might think... This one's pretty old though. Yeah, so... I remember it from back in the day. The thing day. is, we thought we'd covered everything. Yes, yes. And for some reason, there was something sitting in the back of my head. So I'm looking mm -hmm. up CCP wraps. I'm like, certainly we've used them all up at this yeah, point. Yeah, we have yeah. to wait for new ones to come oh, out. Oh, and there, there was another new one, which we'll bring out there was, next yeah. time. Yeah. And so I'm like, holy shit, we forgot about Suga Chuen Mian. Yeah. So the Suga Chuen Mian is the four comprehensives. Yes. Which is... Sigatrian Mian. Sigatrian Mian. Yeah. Sigatrian Mian. So, Sigatrian Mian is the four comprehensive of Xi, of Xi Jinping. Right. And what those are are his four like principles that he puts out there, and people have to memorize. Why does them. it always keep changing the number? Because it's like yeah. the thirteen thoughts or what the core socialist. Core socialist. Because they're and, all different. Like, but they're all the same. It's always a number attached to it. So anyway. the four comprehensives are number one. Mm -hmm. This is Xi Jinping thought, yes. by the way. I'm starting to become fluent in Xi Jinping thought. I'm quite the scholar. <laughs> To build, um, what I'm learning, by the way, with Xi Jinping thought is everything is an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. It's establishing ownership over a principle when you don't actually do it. That's yeah. what Xi Jinping thought is. Like democracy. I think it's just whatever he makes up. Well, I think it's saying what you're supposed to do as a nation, but then not doing it because you already said it. That's good oh, enough. You just say it. You just and then say you're, it. Then you're done. Then you're done. Okay. Now, uh, the first uh, of the Suga Chun Mian, the four comprehensives are, God, that I can't get it out of my head. I know. Uh, I know. You'll build, hear it. <laughs> build a moderately prosperous society, and you would you would be able to back me up on this. Was absolutely the most popular phrase from Xi Jinping. Yes. Moderate prosperity. Yeah, moderate prosperity. Yeah. Which was a flip side of Deng Xiaoping, who said what? He said uh, to to uh, become wealthy is glorious. Right. Yeah. So. The flip side of that was the return to socialism, the yeah. return to communism. And yeah. that's what Xi Jinping is. He's a reformer. He's not pro-market. He's pro-state. Yeah. So I think about... He's a deformer. Yeah. You know? Think he's, about... He's the opposite of like someone like Gorbachev, right? Mm. Gorbachev was pro, fairly pro-market and wanted to open up Soviet society. He didn't want to get rid of the Soviet Union. Sure but wanted to open up Soviet society. Xi Jinping, imagine him as anti-Gorbachev. He wants to go yeah. back to Stalinism. Yes. Right? Um, so number two of his Suga Chun Mian, of the four <laughs> comprehensive. It yeah. sounds weird to say in English, four comprehensives. Four comprehensives. Number two is to deepen reform. So again, to really just uproot. In other <laughs> words, just go back. <laughs> go back. It's not reforming, no, it's, it's deforming. deforming. Yeah. I like that. It's true. Deep and deform. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Number three is to govern the nation according to law. Okay. Uh, it says rule of law. Which doesn't exist in did, China. Did you not, did you, you heard what I said, right? Yeah. It's just establishing yes. what you think is supposed to be there, but not doing it. Imagine that you say like, there's a law, but the law is whatever I decide right Correct. at can the, you get, in a moment. Can you give an example? Like, there is no rule of, I think a lot of people are sometimes confused. They're, they're like, what is rule of law? Can you explain why China doesn't have rule of law? Well, it's very simple. 
Okay, if you were to break a law, for instance, in the West, let's say you, uh, I don't know, jaywalk over the road, right? And there's a police officer there and he sees you jaywalking over the road, he will write you a ticket and then you can then dispute it, you can go to court, you know, there's proper procedure and, uh, you know, you can either pay your fine or you can get it thrown out or whatever, but there's a procedure. In China, it's really official discretion. I mean, if yes. a guy sees you jaywalking, he can either ignore it or... He can go up to you and give you a warning, but most of the time it's just ignored. But let's say someone doesn't like you and they see you jaywalking, then they can, first of all, give you a ticket for jaywalking, but they could also accuse you of disrupting the harmony of society and lock you away in a jail for 15 years or for the rest of your life. There is no rule of law. I'll, I'll and get, there's no way to fight against no, it that's, either. No, that's a great example. And that's a very, yeah. like, uh, that's, it, that's a realistic example. Uh, it gets more sinister at the higher levels. And I've, mm. I've told this before, but I was in the backseat of a government official car. Yes. And it was because I was with relatives that were going to, it was like an unofficial meeting. They were going out to the countryside. They would always go to Shunliao. Yeah, I know Shunliao, yeah. And they'd go out there and they'd go have some seafood, yeah. right? Now, in the back of this car... They'd be racing through these country roads. And I'm not talking about the highway. Yeah. I'm talking about like these S tiny, roads, yeah. yeah, like tiny ones. Mm -hmm. There's no shoulder. Yeah. And there's these peasants on the side pulling carts. You know those, we call them, they, yeah, yeah. they bend over those old ladies because their back's all deformed because yeah, yeah, yeah. they carry rice. Yeah, and they're carrying all those, yeah. And they got these uncle, old uncles, you know, skinny as can be with their hoes, you know, going out to the, feet, the rice fields. <laughs> yeah, going out not their hoes. Like yeah, not skinny going uncle is hoes, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> skinny uncle with his hose yeah yeah uh skinny uncles with their with their rakes you know yeah. to go separate wheat from whatever not wheat rice right, anyway yeah. long story short the mm -hmm. uh they, we were in an audi s6 yeah right a6 sorry a6 black yeah so but it was a long wheelbase one sure small motor yeah yes small motor nothing fast or anything but they were whipping down these roads and the peasants were nearly getting hit. They'd have to sometimes li literally leap yeah, off, get off the, the road. road yeah. And when I asked why we're going so fast, they laughed and said it didn't matter. And I kid you not, I can't do give you a completely direct quote because this is a, like a, a roundabout way of saying this. But the ultimate conclusion was if they hit anyone, they wouldn't be liable for anything. And it yeah. was worth their time. It wasn't worth their time to slow down sure. because those people don't matter. And they, they actually laughed about it, right? Sure. And the reason that I bring this up as an example of there's no rule of law, there's those people don't have any recourse, right? No. If I'm a rich guy in the U.S. and I run over a, a homeless person, that person can f my life life up You'll forever. Go, you will go to jail. I will because that's the law. Yes. that's what rule of law means. Yes. In China, it's on paper, but if you're a CCP official or you have connections, you can get away with murder. Absolutely, you and can. it happens often. Yep. Right. So if you're I remember if you're a, a guy that was a CCP guy that was caught uh, for drug trafficking, not him himself, mm -hmm. he had like an, an operation. He got caught and then they kind of decided, OK, well, I have enough connections with the local judge and like all the people involved. So we're going to make this like it never happened. Yeah. And he got away completely scot free. Sure. Whereas if you were a person that was slightly below him, you'd get your head cut off. For sure. Right. It's always how it works. It's unfortunate. I've witnessed it a lot myself. Right. Because whenever you meet people and they try to brag, they always tell you about their stories about how, you know, their guanxi, yeah. their connections, and yeah. how they got out of this or how they got everyone else out of that too. They brag this way. And I remember in Shenzhen, there was this particularly awful car accident where uh -huh. a guy was driving a, an illegal GTR and he crashed into a taxi. And the occupants of the taxi died because it was one of those BYD electric taxis mm. and it just burst into flames. He ran away from the scene of the accident with, he had like a, two girls in the back or whatever. And then the guy who turned himself in and said he was driving was just completely no, nothing wrong with him, but he was like a, basically a peasant who could never have afforded that car. And this, has, this is what happens is they'll pay someone to take the rap. Obviously, it wasn't him driving the GTR. They'll pay that person to take the fall, go to jail and everything. They give him enough money to give his family and he's willing to do that. Because his family is so poor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That he goes to jail forever. Yeah, he goes to jail, but the people who actually did it just get off scot-free. No, I'm saying that his family gets a ton of money, yeah, so he doesn't have to worry does. about his family. He's a good husband at yeah, that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. yeah, exactly. But he goes to jail, he takes punishment. Right. Uh, that kind of thing happens. But yeah, when it comes to actual rule of law in China, it's so flexible and it's so gray area. You either get away with everything or you get the book thrown at you for nothing it's a very very weird system it is so 
everywhere else in the world that I've lived, there's a certain levels of corruption everywhere and yeah. bribery and all that kind of stuff. But if you make a stink about it here in America, for instance, and you go to the court, you can, no matter what happens, you're arrested for whatever, you can go to the court. You it is until proven guilty. Yeah, at least have that chance to fight and to get the media on your side or the people on your side or the jury or whatever. You have that chance. Not in China. No. It's 99% conviction rate. Anyway, let's uh, get okay, on to this. So the yeah. fourth, the fourth, uh, the fourth, the fourth, the fourth, the fourth, fourth trim in, the, yeah, fourth the fourth comprehensive, comprehensive yes. uh, is tighten party discipline. So that means to basically get rid of the corrupt CCP officials. Yeah, get rid of what we've been talking about now, <laughs> yeah. which is impossible. <laughs> yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. Anyway, so they made yeah. a rap. They made a rap. We're going to show it to you guys. Let's lighten the mood. And I have to tell you, they made it in eight languages eight. in one song. Yes. Their subtitles, we're just going to play it all the way through and then we'll critique it. Yeah, so I guess we're going to get out of here so you yeah. can read the subtitles. Let's hit it. One just a point, two can form a line, three become a plane, four will beat just fine. Why are you playing with me? Is this a full screen, Mr. Ban? Ah, the whole thing is a joke. Ha ha, you're playing with me. Mr. Ban, 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 you're playing with me. Société danse moyenne, elle rebouche chaga. À cette paille d'argent, on n'a plus de chagrin. Pour le monde entier, il faut le coller une verte. Un environnement sain, c'est moi de disparaître. Les choses sont faciles de changer. Les écoles, les empleos, le bien-être social, de tout pour les disputer. Du camp à la ville, ça ne se peut pas parer. Cortez la bureaucratie, dès qu'un système matriculaire. One just a point, two can form a line. Three become a plane, four will be just fine. Prosperity, embrew a law. Party building the key, reform for your own. 特别重要的话，咱得说四遍。四个，四个，四个，四个，四个，四个全面。特别重要的话，咱得。说四遍，四个，四个，四个，四个，四个，四个全面。Follow me， 四个全面，四个全面。Prosperity， follow me， 四个全面，四个全面。Emerald， follow me， 四个全面，四个全面。Party be the key， follow me， 四个全面，四个全面。Reform for your own。دولة حكومة القانون غير ومشي يكون قانون نحترم نلتزم بيه وعاد في يوم تدنا مربي لا بد القانون مش هيفيد عملت مصيبة حاملة دي كلنا أسوأ قدام القانون لفظ دارك من العقاب هيكون ليش سلو يا بارتي نتسي بلين نسي تامي مخالفين زاكون يمتي قرب خيات كي بادروك وفس بارتي قروب سيو عسيلي متاكون ريش واجعت مو مكريقين من برافو One just a point, two can form a line Three become a plane, four will be just fine Prosperity and rule of law Party building the key, reform for your own 特别重要的话咱得说四遍四个四个四个四个四个四个全面特别重要的话咱得说四遍四个四个四个四个四个四个全面 Follow me, 四个全面四个全面 Prosperity, follow me, 四个全面四个全面 And rule of law, follow me, 四个全面四个全面 Party building the key, follow me, 四个全面四个全面 Reform for your own all right. Yeah. yeah, it's. Have you noticed how her mouth is moving, but you don't hear it's only him. Rapping. It's only him. Yeah. This this dude. Now, <laughs> understand si. So they say si 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 is four. So they say si four 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 times. Yes. And it's not good for us. No. That follows us everywhere. Yeah. By the way, this part where it says like. Um, Let's get to where is it? So I just want to make it in Bravo. One just a point, two can form a line, three become a plane. For what? Three become a plane? Yeah, like a a plane, like a Isn't plane. Isn't it like flying plane? No. <laughs> oh, become a plane. Yeah. But wait, what kind of plane? P L A N E. Like a plane. Like, yeah. No, that's P L A I N, isn't it? No. No, a plane. A plane is like a tool you use to like. Yeah, and it's also do like wood. a. Like a, like a, a plane. surface. The rain in, in Spain falls mainly on the plane. Right. So he says one can form a point, two can form a line, okay. three can form a plane. Oh, I see. Like that, Four like a plane be. of existence. Yes, correct. Okay, yeah. all right, that kind of plane. It wasn't... Sure, yeah. Yeah, because I, I didn't see we'll the... Just... Fine, prosper. Yeah, okay, never mind. All right. Sigetrin bien, sigetrin bien. Um, so, yeah, they... So, what I... The reason I wanted to bring this one up is this... Yeah. Why does this exist? Yeah. Why? Why? Well, it's not a very happy go lucky thing to sing about of the lol yeah lol. <laughs> why are they lol, 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 lol. this by the way you know if you've ever tried to watch uh, a tv show or something on the chinese internet using a chinese uh, streaming service this crap that flies across the screen they call them wild subtitles um and it's just people basically commenting on the video and it all just comes on the screen at the same time i way worse drives me nuts my yeah. wife watches something and all i see is this text 
And I'm like, how could you even pay attention to the show? They'd only... rather they'd rather be told how to react. <laughs> it seems that way. I don't know what the deal is, but I don't get it. It's, you, it what is yeah. it called? And uh, mm-hmm. uh, what would burst? <laughs> burst. That's <laughs> yeah, what it's called. Yeah. You could turn burst on. Yeah, and off. yeah. Wild subtitles. Uh, so anyway, mm-hmm. I just want to ask you, why does it like? Okay, Suga so Tran is a Xi Jinping four comprehensive principles, yes, right? Yes. Why does anyone need to know about that? No. No one gives a shit. No. This shows you how tone deaf the CCP is. They get a budget for something. They probably got tons of money in to tons do this. Of, and in different languages yeah. too. Like why? Why do we need to hear your stupid like domestic propaganda crap, you know? But n- nobody's going to watch this. No, and I mean, look, they've got the communist so flag in the background. Yeah, see, yeah, I see With that. a UFO. And a tiger in a cage. And a monkey. Uh, what, couple, couple of, what is going on? A couple of monkeys over there. There's what a die. That's a that yeah. that's that existence for the tiger is quite apt for China. <laughs> they killed all the tigers there. Yes, unfortunately, Chen Mian, you know. Oh yeah, it's kind of uh, cringe. Anyway, there you get your CCP rap fix from us once again. I just don't know why they made that. Now you're gonna have the Suga Chen Mian, Suga Chen Mian, Suga Chen Mian in your head for the rest of the day. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Well, you'll remember what the Suga Chen Mian are now. Yeah, yeah. The four companies. Oh yeah, what? <laughs> we just wanted to show you this <laughs> again. Our subreddit coming coming in with the really good memes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the the title for this meme was. Um, I'm gonna pass this around out of context. Winston and see milk around to see what people say. Yeah. Um, if you don't know the context, it's even funnier because yeah. it says my mom had a major car accident and passed away, and it's me and Winston laughing, laughing our asses yeah. up. You yeah. can explain what it is. Well, that was for that um, stupid good luck bracelet, that fake scam bracelet. They paid a bunch of foreigners to sell their souls to make these adverts about how they had such a hard luck story until they found this bracelet, which gave them like great wealth and did, power. Did I ever tell you I got a hold of one of the guys in the video? Uh, yeah, you did actually. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna expose him. No, I'm no, not no, that no, kind no, of guy. No. I just uh, he is a public personality. Yeah, um, and his excuse for the whole thing was quite funny. What was his excuse? Like, got to pay the bills, you know, like whatever. And I'm like, bro, like <laughs> it's a scam bracelet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what are you what doing? Are you doing? <laughs> like, but they got hired on Fiverr. So China, okay. the CCP will hire people on Fiverr in yeah. these, these Chinese companies just to get yeah. cheap white people to say talk about the stuff. That's right. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Awesome. So let's take a couple super chats before we hit our main sure. segment, which is going to be about Hollywood. Uh, Square says from New Zealand says, "I wish everyone a good and happy day. Even the Fifty Cent Army, they probably need some cheering up. You're yeah, right. they sure. probably do. They can have a Urguel Tall. Yeah. <laughs> which, by the way, Hongxing Urguel Tall is the the go to cheap baijiu. I mean, it's like it's, what, it's not the cheapest. In fact, it's kind of like a it, it's cheap it's cheap but you get way worse yeah like cooking by yeah you get you do get worse but the urgo to is by by the way is um you know made out of sorghum it's yeah. like the rice wine that they make it's a um, it's like vodka yeah it's kind of yeah. like vodka. i'd say hongxing urgo to is like your go-to it's kind of like your Coors light or whatever you know it's just yeah the, you'd every, have to be a scumbag yeah. to drink it yeah though. sure yeah but urgo to means the the head of the second pot Okay, because that means the second part of uh, the from the distillery, you know. You can't drink the first yeah, part, unlike us yeah, that did. Yeah, because you can go blind. Why did they give that to us? Well, you saw what they looked they like. There were blind people Yeah, they were around. all like weird and, you know, the one eye's <laughs> dripping. We anyway. went to a Baijiu distillery yeah. in the middle of nowhere. This place was Silent Hill. Yes. It was so scary. Yeah. And to get there, you had to like go off road. It was crazy. Yeah. And there were donkey carts with people were missing their vision. Yeah, yeah. And it turns out it's because they're drinking all this corn by Joe yes. that's famous in the town. And they're drinking the first distiller. Yeah, distiller so as soon as you open the, the spigot for the first time, the first bit of alcohol that comes out, you're not supposed you to drink that. You have to throw it away. Because that can make you blind and stuff. Yeah. So you know what they did? They opened it up and gave us each a little taste. And then like, they were drinking it. They were saying, this is the best part. <laughs> <laughs> we were like... And then they were, they were like, we give it to three-year-olds. Yeah. And so. they were like, if you drink this all day, you wouldn't even get a hangover. We were yeah, like, yeah, like, what are you talking about? Yeah, it's like, about? You're, you're stupid. That's because you're constantly drunk. That's why you never yeah. have a hangover. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Anyway. this Urgoto, yeah. let them have an Urgoto. Okay, yeah, good. That was a bit of a tangent, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. That's good. Uh, do you think that we can still enjoy Jackie Chan movies even after what he said about the Hong Kong protesters and I Love Police? I mean, yeah, you don't have. I, I, mean, I don't. I personally don't. I, I would. I would watch any of his stuff that was kind of made before he became a, a, com- shill. a communist shill. Yeah, Maybe because you know what, like he he wasn't like that always. You know, if you watch some of no. his older movies, he was not. He was kind of he very cool. very much for Hong Kong before he became a terrible traitor. 
So, you know, something snapped in his mind and he went commie at some point. So before yeah. then, his movies were hilarious. I loved his stuff in the 90s. were great. Agreed. A woman just said that we are very, we are so fake. We are so fake. Yeah. Ah, no, I'm real. I can pinch myself. No, I think because he doesn't believe our Baijiu story. You so know what's great about in? that? It's is in our documentary. It's in a documentary. Go the watch whole it. thing is filmed. Go watch it. So it's called Conquering it. Southern China. You can watch it on Vimeo On Demand. Uh, Jonathan Lau says, Hi, I heard some time in 2019, or even earlier, you say that you'll have more comments on U.S. politics when you're ready. I'm wondering when that will be. Thanks. We talked about that. Yeah, come prep then. Again, yeah. I... I don't. I think I can speak for both of us when I say there is no reason for us to bring in U.S. politics that doesn't involve China, mm -hmm. because when you start to be divisive within that, then you'll only get one side listening to you, and we think the China issue is completely bipartisan. Absolutely. Also, if you want U.S. politics, turn on CNN or Fox or News anything. or anything. Everyone in the world does U.S. politics. We're about China. Sorry to disappoint you. Right. But if you want to have some insight into what I think about U.S. politics, watch my video. It's called What's, What's Really Happening in South Africa. I talk a fair amount about, a fair amount about a U.S. politics in that one. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Ortman says, is the CCP aware of their obsession with face? Is it self-embarrassing? Mm -hmm. And no, they, they are not. Well, I mean, they are, but they can't do anything about it. Yeah. Um, come to Baltimore sometime and I'll let you know where the best beer is. Thank you. And one more, Hanamaru Alice. Hey, Winston Seamilk, is there a particular Chinese dish that you love the most that you'd eat for the rest of your life? Love from Australia. Uh, one I mean, dish, that's mm, tough. I, I kind of like shou dry bean. You know that, you know, it's actually from Taiwan though, so it doesn't count, does uh, it? You, you see, they sell it in China everywhere though. Yeah, okay. You know? So shou dry, shou, shou, dry shou dry bean is really cool and you can get it with like egg and bacon and stuff inside. You know that what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That like... It's always got the kind of purple. Yeah. That's a pretty good everyday snack. Sure. That's, that's yours. Yeah. I would pro. I mean, there's too many dishes that I sure. like. Um, recently, I really like Hunan food. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, but I would say, I mean, if I had to pick one dish that I wouldn't get sick of, for me, it would be probably like Swan Tsai Yu, uh, which is like a, like a pickled vegetable soup with fish in it, just because it's... I don't know. It's always good. I feel like that'd be easy to get sick of because it's like pickled vegetables. Oh, I fish. love. See, that's that's me. I yeah, I mean, it. it's I great. I know it. it's great. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Oh, there's so many. So yeah, there's too many. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, okay. Cool. So let's, let's move, move on, on to our main thing, which is soft power hour. We keep, talk about how keep sending super chats. By yeah, the way, we're yeah, not send, done. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we talk about how China's changing your mind uh, through nefarious ways. Sometimes changing the way sometimes your way of life. Ways. And one fun way, or not fun way, that China's been changing our life forever is how it has been influencing Hollywood. Now, it doesn't only influence Hollywood, it, ho it influences games. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about both. Yeah. Both. And it's, it changes it to the detriment of everyone. Yeah. You see, the Chinese market is like this pot of gold that Hollywood and you know, game studios and stuff go after because of the vast number of people there. They're willing to sacrifice almost anything to get their products sold. So if you can pack Chinese theaters, it means you're going to make a huge profit. What they don't realize, though, is very often they're deal dealing with a, like a rat trap, you know? Like what happened when they were selling tickets. Remember that whole situation? Oh, yeah. They were selling tickets to uh, like Transformers or whatever it was, some Western movie. I went to go see a movie. It was a Western movie. And they took a ticket for a Chinese you movie. You went to go see Transformers. Transformers. It wasn't Transformers. It was um, <laughs> some other joking. piece of garbage. I don't think you would go garbage. see No, no. But it was another... Um, it was a Jason Statham movie. Okay. But I can't remember the name. But I went to go see it anyway. But So what they did was they printed out a ticket for a Chinese movie. And they just crossed it out and wrote with pen on there. Whatever the hell it was. The Transporter 4 or whatever it was that I went to go see. Okay. Right. And I looked at this and I was like, what's going on here? It turns out this is quite common because they want to boost the box office of local movies, okay, because of corruption and all that kind of stuff. They sell the local movies ticket instead of the um, Hollywood one. Mm -hmm. And they give you the, the you know, the Hollywood, I mean, they, they, whatever the, the way they did, they did it, they give you the ticket for the Chinese movie, but they've just crossed it out and written it so you can walk into the right one. So in the box office, it looks like the Chinese movie did incredibly well, but it's that's because everyone's watching the Hollywood movies. Mm. So you know, you Hollywood think they would have found out. a better way to do that? Oh, the, they did. Did they? Okay. They had these. Th there was this thing where, um, like, pensioners can watch movies for like almost yeah. free or whatever. Remember that? Yeah. And so sixty-five what, plus or something. Yeah. So what they were plus. doing was they were filling up theaters with so-called pensioners. But what they'd done is they'd just basically written off and given the pensioner tickets out to no one threw them in the bin 
and just like booked the, booked up the theaters. So the theaters were empty playing the film, and it looked like the Chinese movie was doing very well. Right. They were doing crap like that. Remember? So yes, ridiculous. I so do Hollywood that. really gets screwed over a lot, but they still make a lot of money. Yeah. So it's this whole idea of like, if we can get our movie into China, we're going to make bank, right? Yeah. So what Hollywood does. Mm hmm. They know that in China, this is a born out of piracy, by the way. When I first moved to China, going to the movie theater was not that common. No, because everybody watched everything for free online. Correct. Or you'd go to the DVD shop. Yeah, which is all fake DVDs. Every street corner had a DVD shop. And I'm talking up until like, I I saw Mm. them up until like 2015, 2016. I've still got pictures of myself in one of those in, uh, you know. I used to go to those yeah, places and check it out. Time. Yeah, and that, was, that must have also been about 2016, 2017, yeah. They'd have some weird stuff. I wish I had some footage from back then, but what they would be is there would be a whole shop, and it would say DVD. They had Blu-ray and stuff, too. Mm-hmm. And you go in there, and they would have sleeve after sleeve of video. So there, there would be like a Hideo Miyazaki section, yeah. Yeah. and there would be like his whole box set. But if somebody made the copies of these DVDs, Hayao Miyazaki, Hayao, whatever. You think Hideo? Hideo Kojima. Kojima yeah. Yeah, don't Let's say me. as a Hideo Kojima. I know Kojima. they all look the same to you, man. Stop. But... <laughs> get out of here. Yeah, I'm a fan of both, by the way. Yeah. I like Hideo Kojima and Hayao. You gotta show you two different photos. You gotta show me which one. I which. know what they look like. I can actually picture them right now. I'm actually gonna just show you a picture of Shinji Abe, and you'll be like, "That's him." That's <laughs> stop. <laughs> Stop it. Okay. Uh, anyway, so you'd go into these shops, and yeah. it was a very Chinese thing. It was very, yeah. like, only in the mainland you'd get this. You wouldn't get this yeah. in Hong Kong. No, no, no. So you'd go into these shops, and there'd be... It's kind of like going into a blockbuster or something, yeah. but it's 10 RMB DVD. So we're talking a dollar. Sure. Dollar fifty for a DVD. You'd have weird stuff. You'd have movies that were... You'd take them home sometimes, and you'd watch it, and it'd be like filmed in a hungarian movie theater and there's people like eating popcorn yeah exactly getting up and walking in front of the camera. yeah you know, that but was... it's got like a label on it mm-hmm. right like it's got like a label like it was printed out properly yeah, it looks like it's yeah. legitimate yeah then you'd get weird shit yeah and i would go by the weird shit i remember i bought this one dvd it was uh it had the picture of the twin towers getting hit with planes yeah and it was like the secret truth of 9 11 so this is being sold in mainland china yeah and you put it in your DVD player, and it's like a bunch of random ass clips. Some clips from horror movies, <laughs> some clips from like B horror movies, and then some clips of news uh, news broadcasts that are dubbed over in Chinese about 9 yeah. 11, mm-hmm. which are not saying what's actually the news is saying. Yeah. Showing like all these weird conspiracy theories, and you'd buy these random Dude, ass yeah, DVDs. They, I got tricked once or twice. There was one where. It had like Army of Darkness 2. And I'm like, did they make an Army of Darkness 2? And I had on the cover this really weird looking cover art. And I was like, wait a second. It's got like a wave. Yeah. And it's got like the Fast and Furious Charger <laughs> leaping yes. out of the wave. Yes. And there's like an Eiffel Tower. And I'm like, this is really weird. And then you go put it in some like weird French film, like yes. an art film or something yes. from 1960 or something. They just made this stuff up. And, and because porn is illegal, you'd get racy ones. And it would be actually be cut clips, like cut clips sometimes of someone filming a computer yeah and it's not even porn it's like cut clips from rated r movies or like some sure. weird french movie where i heard boobs show or something sure. they'd like splice these together and sell these like hot dvds but they would also have real porn dvds copied from J- japanese ones yeah either way in the back and you'd have to ask or know someone they got to a point where they were being cracked down on and a lot of those dvd places you'd have to go and they were hidden they'd yeah. be behind like a weird curtain not or like th- a not in third tier cities yeah well when, <laughs> in shenzhen it'd be shenzhen, like a yeah. weird curtain or you'd have to go up a flight of stairs into this weird weird room and they'd open it up and right. you know they had cameras to yeah. make sure you weren't the cops coming in yeah. it was kind of bizarre is in the anyway. in rural china i say rural in cities with yeah. less than five million people sure they were still everywhere yeah and you could just rock up and buy buy stuff but the point is mm. um all of this was born this hollywood this fascination with hollywood for china and that hollywood's fascination with the chinese market was born out of piracy because yes. there was no market that went to the uh movie theaters i remember when i uh, would go on dates I would no, say we, we wouldn't go on dates. <laughs> I said I <laughs> okay. would go on dates. Yeah, I didn't say exactly. with you. Yeah, exactly. When, when, Winston, I would, on... when Winston and I would date. <laughs> <laughs> date women. <laughs> women. Yes. Um, when, mm. we, when we weren't yeah. dating each other. No. <laughs> um, when mm. I would take girls on on dates, mm-hmm. it was quite a treat in the beginning for me to take them to a movie theater because they were so expensive. They were. Yes. They're wildly cheaper now. Yes. You can still pay a lot of money. It used to be like them. 75 RMB. Yeah. yeah. And you got to imagine, like for somebody that makes back then, especially when I first got to China... Like, let's say a girl is a teacher or yeah. she works as a accountant. Oh, the yeah, office person office or, girl, you know, right? fa- factory worker or something. I, w- I remember I took this date, uh, girl on a date. She worked as a 
Uh, she translated um, signs for for government parks. Right. Okay? Right. So I would hang out with her, and she would pour tea or whatever, whatever, and like mm-hmm. like entertain guests and stuff. Yeah. Nice girl. Anyway, she had a decent job. She was educated, had a bachelor's degree. But she only made about 1,800 RMB a month back yeah. then. So yeah. for her to go spend 75 RMB on a movie, you got to imagine, that's like, you would say, it's like you making $1,800 $1, a month here mm. and then spending 75 bucks on a movie ticket. Yeah, I mean, and don't forget, 75 RMB, especially back then, could get like... A, that's what I'm saying. A, a massive meal. Imagine it's, it's dollars. It's like a whole day. Imagine it's dollars. It's, it's like you could, you could have meals every day of the week for 75. I mean, I'm saying like... You could have a 15 RMB meal. Oh, that's and then, high end. Yeah. You, you could can, have five RMB meals. Exactly. So 75 is like a week's worth it's of, huge, of right? food. It's huge, right? Of food. That's a yeah. good way to put it. Yeah. Imagine spending a week's worth of food salary mm. on a movie. So yeah. for me, 75 RMB wasn't that much, sure. right? It wasn't, it wasn't nothing. Yeah. And they were even more expensive, 130, you know? Oh, depending. yeah. Like, yeah. I remember spending over 100. Now, the mm. price came down with competition. And what yeah. happened was when movies became affordable that moment i would say maybe 2012 2013 when movies yeah. started to get affordable and the average chinese person's salary is raising while the movie ticket prices are coming down it became absolutely the most popular thing you could do sans ktv yeah to go to see a, a movie. movie yeah so all of a sudden it doesn't matter if people are pirating your stuff at that point because yeah. the sheer chunk of people that can now afford to go buy a movie ticket in china is astronomical. I mean, yeah. it's three to four times the uh, ticket sales that you'd get in the U.S. Yeah. So all of a sudden, that becomes a very uh, palatable market for Hollywood. They start to salivate over this potential clientele yes. base. So what happens is a natural thing. China's an oppressive dictatorship, yep. right? You have a Pepsi over there if you want. Oh, I do. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's right. China is an oppressive dictatorship that has a censorship board. Mm-hmm. Now, the censorship board has to go through everything domestic and foreign, but particularly they have to comb through everything foreign. Wow, that's some ASMR. <laughs> You're going to deafen people. <laughs> I think this mic's got a cut off. Ah, okay. All right. So what they do is they have to go through the censorship board and make sure everything's okay. It has to be approved <sighs> Warm by Warm the... Pepsi. It's been there for a week on my desk. <laughs> has to be approved by the Chinese Ministry of Film. Right. Okay. And the Chinese Ministry of Film is co- uh, is, uh, is part and parcel part of the propaganda board, the censorship Correct. board. There's only a number of films that are allowed every year, right? So, how yeah. Many? So, this is what happened. Do you remember how it's, many? I think it's it was at, at its peak 30, mm-hmm. and then now it's been dwindled down to sub 20. Yeah, okay. so 15 or 15, maybe I less. think. Yeah, it said sub 20. Okay. So, what happens is, in order to get into that very amazing market with billion potential ticket sales, you could... Uh, you could try to get your film passed to the Chinese censor board, but that didn't become good enough. So you'd have your version that you'd release in the U.S., and then you'd have your, your version that you'd release in China. And that Chiinese version would have anything cut out related to Tiananmen Square, Tibet, uh, anything that paints China in a negative light, right? Mm-hmm. So what happened was to get into that threshold, let's say, let's just say there's 34 films allowed each year. Okay. I think it's less than that. Okay. I'm saying back then Mm -hmm. in order to be one of those films, you didn't just censor your movie. You had to start with it being not bad. You had to start with it having nothing offensive in it for the Chinese market. And not only that, you had to add things in to make it more likely that they were going to pick it up. So you started to see films not just have a censored version. They would start out censored for the Chinese market and then add in like heroes that had to do with China or add in quotes. I remember this one movie that said like, uh, I come from the future and let me tell you, you tell your kids to start studying Mandarin. Yeah, Stuff like that. Looper or, Looper or whatever. Yeah. That kind of stuff started to creep into Hollywood movies. And now yeah. what we see is films that start out with a censorship board in the US yes. for China, yeah. adding elements in to be pro-China, to make China look good for domestic American audiences yes. as soft power. That's, well, that's how far we've fallen. The, the fact of the matter is, okay, think about this. You're a Hollywood studio, you're making a movie, okay? Now, you want your movie to succeed around the world, okay? But you know that if you release the one you really want to release, like maybe there's a, a map in it that has Taiwan on the map or whatever, okay? Maybe you mention Taiwan. Maybe you mention Tibet. Maybe something in it just doesn't go well with the Chinese uh, censorship. Maybe, you know, there's a, a person in there who mentions Tiananmen Square or whatever. There could be anything. You know it's not going to make it into the Chinese uh, market. Even the smallest little slight 
Like having skeletons and stuff in your movie, it's not going to make it into the Chinese market, right? So you have to change all of that because if you were to release the film the way you want it, you would have to film a whole bunch of extra crap just and cut a lot of extra crap just so it could make it into the Chinese market. So rather than make two, basically two separate cuts of a film, you just budget down and you make one. Right. So it ends up being this China-friendly version that now everybody has to watch. But now what you're watching is a watered-down product, something right. that's missing a lot of what the original director and screenwriter and everything wanted to show. And this is how China has changed our movies and made them worse and crapper and more yes. lame because the Chinese Communist Party is so sensitive about so many different things and stupid little things he wouldn't even think about, like the fact that they don't like skeletons and things, that your movie is going to be shitter when you go and watch it in your local theater just to appease the chinese communist party all right, right? correct and that's the big problem that we have is that hollywood has been pandering and i'm sure you've noticed tons of movies where it's suddenly really weird and out of place that they have a chinese product placement like in the transformers movie where the guy's drinking mung nyo milk and making a big thing or in it. Uh, iron man when all of a sudden they're using a tcl phone which yeah. nobody uses here yeah, exactly you know that kind of garbage right suddenly it's like very forced so there was that i watched this awful movie with like king kong kong island or something Why you watch that? it was a i don't know it was like a free movie ticket I got, uh, or something like that and all of a sudden in 1940s America, they're going to this Kong Island. There's randomly a Chinese actress in there, you know, who doesn't have any lines really. And it's not really contributing to the film. You Just like, use connections to yeah, get in there. I now. mean, no, but the whole point is, no, they put, they put the Chinese actress in there so that it can appeal to the Chinese. Audience, right, right, right. Okay, and to, to uh, China so that people will want to go and watch it in China. Right. I'm just saying that things are very artificially put into Hollywood movies in order to make it appeal to um, China, mm -hmm. which really kind of ruins a lot of the movies, in my opinion. Yeah. So that's so, the issue. So let's get on to Shang. So just Shang Chi. Shang Chi. Shang -Chi. Shang -Chi. So it's it's pronounced C H I, mm -hmm. which everyone will pronounce, and it's supposed to be pronounced as Chi. But in that for Winston and I, <laughs> for Winston and I, we that speak Chinese, it should be Q I if it's pronounced that. So yeah. C H I is Chi. Shang Chi means <laughs> start eating, basically. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, Kai Kai Fan Shang Chi, yeah. get on top of the food, like eat <laughs> get food. On top of that food. Yeah, Shang Chi, man. Uh, anyway, Shang Chi, I I ended up seeing it as homework for this show. Okay, okay? you went to watch it. I went to see it in the theater, mm -hmm. and I was. First of all, just want to get this out of the way, I was expecting it to be a complete panda bear movie. I walked in completely getting ready to be disappointed. Sure. I thought it was going to be a panda bear movie for China. I got to say, it kind of wasn't. Okay. Um, there wasn't really anything pro-CCP or anything that was forced to be pro-China. I would say it's pro-Asian. Okay. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. And nope. I wrote a little review here. I, I oh, wrote some notes. Oh, you have a review. Okay, just a couple notes. Um, I wrote, it was a decent movie. It was too action-y for me. What do you expect from this kind of movie? It's a Marvel movie. I don't like Marvel movies. So I have to say that's my initial bias. Okay. okay. I really don't like Marvel movies. The only Marvel movies I liked was the Thor ones. Yeah, I like the, the one with the kind of 80s vibe to it, whichever one that was. You know, where you went to that weird planet and it had Jeff Goldblum in it. Yes, yeah. that's that's yeah. Thor. That was, that was hilarious. Yeah, that one was really I like good. those ones because they're funny. Um, so I'm not a huge Marvel movie fan. Uh, Leong was a good villain. Uh, that's the, the, the actor. And uh, Simu Liu played a great character as well. I thought the characters were great. Okay. Uh, the world building wasn't great, I thought. I thought it could have been a better... You know, like um, Black Panther and all those other ones, they have like a huge world. Or like Thor, right? Okay. There's all those worlds around it, right? Yeah. The world of this movie was kind of weak, I thought. I'm seeing a lot of like Chinese mythology in the background. And that's fine. A lot of Chinese imagery. But it's not mm. forced. It yeah. just takes place in China. Yeah. It's not, It's. I mean, it's for some of it. It's not, a, it's not like put in there because, oh, this is going to be pro-CCP. Yeah. Pro-CCP is when it's like China's going to rule the world. I told you. We show what? this trailer. We're going to get copyright. It was, fair, it was fair use. We've detected copyright audio and video in your stream. Your stream audio may be and temporary. video. There's no, there's no audio. Well, there's video. Your stream may be blocked. Oh, no. Hollywood, you bastards. Anyway. <laughs> That's, it should be fine. Well, everyone can see it. They'll do a quick check. Can anyone, everyone see it? I'm sure it's fine. They're just going to try and throttle it in some reason. We'll just leave, a, mm -hmm. just leave a, mm -hmm. a, a picture of him up here. I warned him. I it did. was fine. Everyone else uses movie trailers. for. So I use movie trailers in my stuff. I never yeah. get hit. Okay. Well, anyway. Because it's made for distribution. 
We'll find out what it actually was. What if it was Suka Chuan Mian? Yeah, I wonder if it was Suka Chuan Mian. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. let me finish my review here. Okay, finish your review. Uh, I wrote, it was cool that uh, he started as a car valet and ended up superhero. I kind of like that rags to riches thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I was pretty awesome. The, uh, the stunts and choreography are great. Not my thing. Yeah. Not a huge kung fu. I don't like, I love kung fu movies like from the 80s, especially in Hong Kong stuff, but I don't watch it for the fighting scenes. Yeah. I like it because it's funny. Right. Um, and I thought this movie took itself way too seriously. Okay. Um, too derivative. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's just Marvel in general. Like, what do you expect from a Marvel sure. movie? Right. Sure. I think overall, I said it was a talented cast, but not an incredible tale. And I gave it a seven and a half out of 10. Okay. Good I think you. if you like that kind of thing, you'll like the movie. Sure. Now, I expected it to be a super panda bear movie to China. But what I will say is, of course, Marvel expected this to be a massive hit in China, yeah, right? Yeah. So they went into I'm not going to say they completely made it for that reason. What I yeah. want to say is that that was a huge added bonus for them to do this, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost a guaranteed shoe in yeah. for them to, to allow this movie into China. Right. Because other Marvel movies are allowed into China for the most part. Mm -hmm. Of course, this one would be. Now, why wasn't it yet? Yeah, we're going to talk about why it wasn't. And I agree with you. The fact that it was set in China, this particular superhero is all about Chinese mythology, from what I can tell, at least from the, the copywritten trailer that we've been showing in the background. That's Everyone said it should be fine. Yeah, we'll see. Bloody YouTube and bloody Hollywood and their bloody pandering and they said pieces of junk. Anyway... From what I can tell, it's all set in China with Chinese mythology. You can tell from the architecture. You can tell from the dragon that was there with all the kung fu. It's all China-centric. So I'm pretty sure they were banking on this being sure. huge in sure. China, yeah. right? Which is what you'd expect. But, um, you know, let's take a look. The, the main actor, what did he say? Okay, you can read this out. I'm going to clean the video for people to read. This is what he... When did he say this again? In 97. 97. Or I mean, sorry, 2017. Two, two, 2017, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, okay. What did he say? So Simu uh, Leo, he's Canadian. He's the main actor. He's the main actor. He's the guy with the rings or whatever. Right, and he doesn't pander to China, Yeah. right? Especially back in this interview, he's talking about his parents said they lived in the third world. Um, they they grew up in communist China and they thought Canada was a pipe dream where you have people dying of starvation in China from communism, right? Yeah. So he and later says I'm fully Canadian. I, he doesn't consider himself China. well. It makes sense, right? Yeah. Just like I'm an American, I don't consider myself German. Right? Sure. So he's born and bred Canadian dude, and that's fine. And he, I think he appreciates his culture and stuff like this. But saying something like this back in the day was enough to get netizens raring and riled up yeah man. so the fact that he'd read said, some stuff he'd said this yeah let's hear what the the wu mao or the nationalists said so let me just pull up some quotes here all right sugatran min sugatran min sugatran min our little warning about copyright went away by the good way. see i think it's fine I don't we think didn't so. lose no we didn't lose any viewers oh okay said maybe blocked it wasn't blocked it was, it was, we're going to get hit with this later. They're going to come have a word with us. We'll get a knock on the door. <laughs> okay. um, I'm trying to find these quotes, Which? entertain people. Okay, here we okay, go. Now you found them. Uh, so on Weibo, this is what people were saying, right? Mm -hmm. He immigrated from uh, Harbin in Heilongjiang province to Canada with his parents, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess oh, he's, he's born in China, but mm -hmm. relates to Canada. Um, and now considers himself completely Canadian. Yeah. This got, just this one little thing, right, when it dropped, it got 1,600 angry comments, right? Okay. He said, so one person says, so how does he get off playing in Chinese? Because the whole thing is he has to play a Chinese character, right? Sure. But if he's, if his character, who's not in the movie, his real man person, yeah, yeah, yeah. said that he considers himself Canadian, what does that have to do with the movie? Sure. It's called uh, acting. It's called acting. People pretend ass. he's pretending to be literally be a superhero. <laughs> yeah. Is he in real life like being able to use these rings? If or he is, we need to have a talk. Yeah. Uh, how did his parents go to twenty Canada twenty seven years ago? Were they illegally washing dishes? <laughs> how dare you? Yeah. Right. Uh, just just looking at his face brings you bad luck. <laughs> what kind of a comment is that? It's that's. You can translate that in Chinese. Yeah, that would yeah, be, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, once people obtain... For, uh, so there was a couple uh, retort. Uh, what's it called? Retorts. Uh, retorts. Yeah. Uh, once people obtain foreign citizenship, they're foreigners. Don't make a big fuss. He's an overseas Chinese. Mm -hmm. um, and then a couple of people said, I don't see a problem with this. But the a good chunk were like frothing at the mouth saying, fuck you. Speaking of, of all of this, uh, just... <clears throat> okay. 
the netizens and their reaction like that is probably one of the main reasons yes. that it hasn't been shown in China and probably won't be shown in China. Who knows? But it would have been released by now if it was going to be shown in China, right? There's another little thing that just happened um, because of netizens. Uh, little Kyoto, in, was it in Dalian? In Dalian? They set up um, this beautiful street. Is it Qingdao or Dalian? I, th- I could just take I'll a look, look at where it was. I think it's Dalian. Um, but anyway, they set up this beautiful street in... Um, where was it? Yeah, let's find out. Where was it? Dalian, yeah. In you're, Dalian, you're right. right? So they set up a... Actually, it's part of a big complex. You know, in China, they love to do this. They'll take a specific area and then they'll kind of model it after some specific well, Dalian thing. Dalian was Japanese territory. It used to be, yeah. yeah. But they'll model it after a certain thing and then they'll kind of build it. So they'll make like a little fake Italy or something. And yeah. then they'll build it all around Italian stuff or a fake France or even like that Hallstatt that we went to where they copied an entire... Very badly, by the way. We've got a, we've got a video. Two, I got two videos of that, yeah. yeah. Hallstatt where they took like this town from... Where is it from again? Like uh, Austria. Austria. And then they recreated it the same way. So they did this, but for Kyoto... I remember they had steak and spaghetti on yeah. that plate. <laughs> just rem- oh, just right. remember how bad it was. Everything was just a, a... Remember like, what was that dude's name? Oh, uh, the the oh, artist. What the freaking hell? Burke. 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 Reinhardt. Just tell the Burke story Hold. real quick. So they, they they set up this thing. It's supposed to be. The can we do it? Time. Can we do a feature next episode about that? Yeah, just put it down. Let's next, put it. It's so yeah. funny. You got to see Burke's art. Yeah, it's the worst thing you've seen in your life. Anyway, uh, we'll we'll feature Holstadt next time. We'll show you the. We'll show you yeah, a fake. We'll, we'll show you everywhere. Anyway, uh, the fact of the matter is, they did something similar similar now, but with Kyoto, and they made this beautiful area where they kind of made it look like a specific Japanese area of Kyoto or whatever. So it's got all the shop signs. It's got the beautiful sakura trees. It's kind of, you know, it's got all the snacks. They had all the, you know, people can go there, wear a kimono, buy the fans, all that, you know, just kind of like a theme park type area, like a, a themed area. And they had a soft opening where they invited a bunch of people to go in and enjoy the day and take photos. And uh, online, the netizens were like, this is a cultural invasion yes. of China, it's like the Japanese have invaded us again and stuff. And so the place had to get shut down. Can you right. believe it? After stupid amounts, like $400 million or something was spent making that area. Right. right. That's and, correct. And uh, it got shut down just because of this. You know, you got to understand right now, China's on full nationalist mode. They are literally on the, just on the flip of a switch. They're going to shut anything down if they think that it's not Chinese or not like pandering to the CCP or the Chinese national identity. So this whole thing, which, by the way, set up by Chinese people, set up by a Chinese company, yeah. set up by the Chinese local municipality there, you know, all is like a big theme park. Thing. Yeah, this is all China. It's all Chinese. Got shut down by these like stupid, overly zealous nationalist people. So this is kind of what's happened with this Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi movie, right? <laughs> I can't get over this yeah, spelling. Shang- Spell Shang-Chi. it correctly, Yeah, Marvel. But here's the lesson, though, okay? The lesson, this is what this is what we need to take out of all of this. Yes. Hollywood. You were expecting this to do very well in China, okay? Which is probably why, you know, you have a heavy emphasis on the whole Chinese thing. I know it's all part of the movie and stuff, but you were expecting that's that. great. Yeah, that's, nothing that's great. wrong with that. But guess what? You didn't get into China. But you know what? The movie did well. Yeah. The movie did it's a good movie. Well. It broke box office, what made like ninety million. Ninety three million or something. In its shit? first hmm. weekend, the Labor Day weekend. It's a good movie. Whatever. It's a good movie. If you like Marvel movies, it's a great so, movie. Hollywood, stop pandering to China. You don't need it. You don't, you don't need, need it. it. You're, you, you, grew, you grew your bloody industry away from China. China had nothing to do with Hollywood's growth. No. It had nothing to do with your success. And it should have nothing to do with your future. Stop pandering to China. Stop changing your narrative. Stop changing and kowtowing and bowing down to a totalitarian, authoritarian regime just so you can get a little bit of money. Guess what? You can still make your money if you just make good movies and you put them out there to the world like you always have. Forget about this China crap. Deal with your core audience and make what you want to make. I think the the best thing that could have happened is this Shang-Chi movie is about has a China-centric focus. Yes. It's a decent movie. And it wasn't allowed in China for very petty reasons, yes. but it's people still liked it here. They still liked that's it. That's fantastic. And you know what? It has it gives a positive image of it China. It does, and that's exactly what you want. Yeah, right? that's it fine. Does. People can look at it and get some Chinese culture, which 
I'm going to be honest with you, brutally honest, the, the nice parts of the Chinese culture that movies like Shang-Chi are showing don't actually exist in mainland China anymore. Mm. All the Kung Fu temples, monks, all that kind of stuff has but been destroyed. the past destroyed. deserves to be, to yeah, be acknowledged. exactly. So they do this nice stuff, make China look good and all of that. That's fantastic. Hollywood, do that, but don't do it to the detriment of, you know, everybody. You don't need to. Yeah. You don't so need to. So none of this, like, advertising Meng Nyo and TCL and, and <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Making well, not just that, like, actually censoring yeah. for Western audiences. And making, like, praising Chairman Mao, yeah. whatever you have you to do. You don't praise the freaking government. Yeah. And, you know. And making the Chinese government the savior of the world like yes. they do in some of these movies. Exactly. You want to talk about... Um, oh, just, just a quick throwback to Chloe Zhao. I remember mm -hmm. she won an Oscar and the Chinese government went after her because she said in the past in an interview, mainland China is a country full of lies. And she was talking about the government. Yes. Everyone was at her throat. Yeah. Um, and again, we just wanted to give uh, a shout out to the people that, you know, stand up to this stuff. Yeah. And have to deal with the, the rage mm -hmm. of Chinese netizens because we understand how it is. Yeah. What's this about? Uh, just another part of the band hammer. This is uh, Jinmin from uh, BTS. Right. A very p popular dude. So they just banned 22 uh, Weibo accounts, including his. Oh, his Jimin, actual Jimin, one? Yeah, Jimin is, he's like the, uh, I guess like the leader of, B sorry, you guys are going to kill me, but he's like the leader of BTS. Okay. You know BTS, a very famous yeah, K-pop band. Yeah, it's a K-pop band. So, so the sissy pants that have now been banned, that kind of thing. They're going after <laughs> that stuff now. Yeah. Now, there was some sort of, I'll read this, it says, uh, fans of BTS crowdfunded on the platform to customize an airplane for the singer's birthday. It's okay. Wow, like talk about <laughs> That's some, some fan. dedicated fans. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, um, Weibo accused the fan accounts of illegal fundraising, illegal fundraising. for the stunt. Okay. But, and they said they firmly oppose such irrational star-chasing behavior and will deal with it seriously. So you're not allowed the to government, actually. raise money to buy your favorite plastic boy uh, a birthday present. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that. No. Okay. No. Don't say that. What? You're not plastic. It looks like it to me. Hey, you are about to get... <laughs> I what? don't... Okay, Winston. Yeah, what? You know the CCP is bad, mm. right? K-pop fans are not bad, but I'll tell you what. If you cross them, you are screwed. I am BTS fan for life. Well, I'll tell you what. The, the good thing about plastic is... that? is Permission to Dance. I know that new song. I listened to BTS in the car Listen, the other day. Plastic Pretty good. doesn't degrade, so he'll keep his boyish good looks for forever. I think he's very real, and to be honest. Plastic, I think he looks quite natural. Plastic can be divided up equally and given to... So you could literally, like, what? everybody could get... Every one of his fans could get a piece of the plastic. I actually don't think he looks like he has plastic surgery. No, he just looks like plastic. I didn't see he had plastic surgery. Oh, I Does gotcha, he not I look gotcha. like plastic? I think he's he looks shiny. Awesome. He's a great guy. <laughs> and at BTS, I'm a big fan. Huge fan. Don't come after me, please. Anyway, cool. Uh, anyway, so... Uh, well, they, the government told... They customized an airplane for him. They're obviously pretty... You know, they obviously like him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably a good guy. Yeah. Do you remember the BTS meal? No. You don't follow anything, do you? I don't follow this BTS stuff. It's Behind in America. You live in America, right? Mm -hmm. Amer it's, BTS is huge in America. They're like number one. So I have to say congratulations to korea a tiny country to soft cultural power. export cultural export that's a great. huge it's fantastic huge cultural export isn't that insane yeah. you're getting a bunch of people that speak english they don't speak korean to get number one on billboard for a language they don't even know yeah it's pretty to the good. point where they make a freaking mcdonald's meal they oh, had I didn't a know they had yeah them. they had a bts mcdonald's meal in the u.s did they have like a rumstein meal because no that's way did, did they not make it pretty big over here I mean, yeah, nowhere near this. Yeah, sure. Holy crap. And never a Rammstein meal be like strudel or something. <laughs> you know what, <laughs> you know what the BTS meal was? What? <laughs> Just guess. Plastic rice. No, stop. No, no, what is it? Oh, <laughs> Tell me, God. what is it? I don't know what it is. Botox? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, what? what you is literally just signed your death sentence. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm on the fan side. You know, I just want him to be able to share himself with everyone. Stop. Okay, anyway, what is McDonald's, it? McDonald's. <laughs> what was it? McDonald's BTS meal was a ten-piece chicken nuggets and Sprite. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> yes. And it sold out. Wow. You didn't even get a toy. <laughs> what do you? Did you get like a printed like a card or no. something with it? No. It's just you go there and you get the BTS meal and it's chicken nuggets. <laughs> it's just, okay. Anyway, so um, Weibo, yeah, 
on the, the point of this is not to talk about BTS. Sure. It's to talk about why Chinese government is doing this. Mm -hmm. They said they firmly oppose such uh, rational star chasing behavior and will deal, deal with it seriously. And the government told Weibo to say, and I say this, uh, it, Weibo is just putting this out, but you know the government's behind this. Yeah. Uh, it pledged to purify online discussions and regulate community order. <laughs> Regular wow. community order. So. Because some fans customized an airplane for him. Yes. Who cares? Yeah. Anyway, they shut down his account too. Uh, okay. Six month ban. And it's because... It's because they're trying to cut down on this fan worship thing. Yeah. And the sissy boy movement thing. Right. And they think that if there's... China, and not to mention... Have you noticed that they haven't gone after... Uh, what are those guys' names? The soup guys? The, the unrendered soup oh, guys? Oh, what are they? The BS TF boys? boys. Oh, <laughs> the fuck boys. Yeah, TF, so the TF fuck boys. boys. The yeah. fuck boys. They, Which um, is the same thing as a BT, BTS, but like a knockoff. Oh, yeah. Low, knock low rent version. Low rent version. Yeah. BTS is like top, right? We showed you last time we were talking about the sissy boys. Those guys doing all those dances. Those are the TF boys. TF boys. So the TF boys are the Chin they're Chinese. The Chinese BTS. They're like Chinese K-pop rip, rip offs. Rip off, yeah. So you notice they're not getting people aren't going after them that much. So if BTS was Chinese, they wouldn't they wouldn't suffer the same no, thing. No. China hate the Chinese government hates that there's foreign worship going on because sure. Korea is considered a foreign country, right? Yeah. Um, and they're also China, China looks down on other Asian countries. They absolutely do. They see the they're the safeguard of they Asian look, culture. They look down on all countries. Yeah, yeah. They true, honestly true. do think that they're the pinnacle of civilization and the best of the center of the world. That's why it's called Zhongguo, you know, oh, central kingdom. While you talk about that, I'm getting a straw poll. Someone wants us. They they did a super chat straw poll. Yeah. About cool. Rammstein versus BTS. Oh yeah, Rammstein. This should be interesting. Yes. This should be interesting. I'm gonna vote BTS just to just to be the other. Just side. to cover your ass. No, because I love. BTS, huge fan. <laughs> it's just, BTS, yes. you, you can entertain people. Uh, okay. Um, entertain I'll, people with I'll the do. next thing. Okay, let's see what comes up next. Because I, I finished that. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm making uh, a straw poll, uh, Rammstein versus BTS. You know, like when you're in the military and you kind of hold on to your jacket, like maybe you, some of you got like an old military bomber jacket from your grandpa or something. Yeah, we covered know? this before. I'm I know we have, but I'm just back. saying, you know, like... You, you have this jacket and you keep it your, your whole life, right? Because it's important. It's got the memories. Yes. You know, like when you went to Taiwan and Japan during your, um, your tour of duty, that, yeah. right? <laughs> so you went to Taiwan and Japan and you got your, your flags like embroidered onto your jacket. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like 20, 20 odd years later, you decided, I love this old jacket of mine with my touring flags of wherever I went. But you know what? I'm going to tear off the Japan and Taiwan one and I'm going to put some nondescript triangle and a, a circular, circular thing instead. In fact, it looks like the Brotherhood of Nod, the second one over there, you know, like the scorpion. I'm just going to do that because sentimentality psh, doesn't matter. Okay? I just want everyone to know the straw poll is now in the description. And in the chat, but and if yeah. you don't see it in the chat, go to the description. BTS versus Rammstein, which is better? Okay, yeah, continue. Yeah. So, so this is an example. Yeah, like if we get ourselves out of here, um, we all know Top Gun, right? I actually watched Top Gun the other day with my wife because she hadn't seen it before. Oh yeah, yeah. Such a cheesy movie. It's Great awesome. movie. Great it's movie. A, it's the eighties, man. Very cheesy though. It's, yeah, it is. It's freaking amazing. I went to the Top Gun house, you know. Oh that, yeah, you that did. House. <laughs> yeah, remember with your there. car? Yeah. Anyway, the fact of the matter is. Um, in the original Top Gun, he has a Taiwanese flag and a Japanese flag, okay, on his jacket, which are historically correct because, you know, that's a tour that they go. They go on the aircraft carrier, they go past and drop in yeah. at those ports. And so they get their thing. But because to pander to Chinese uh, censors, <clears throat> first of all, China hates Japan, okay? And yeah. second of all, they hate Taiwan because they think Taiwan belongs to them. Yeah. So you're not allowed to show the Taiwanese flag in anything. Right. And the Japanese flag preference is not preferential either. So in the new, whatever they called it, they keep digging Tom Cruise up. Have you noticed? He's yeah. completely over the hill. The guy, I mean, for his age. He looks he's in, great. He's in great for shape for his age. Yeah, sure, sure he does. But it's like, dude, you can't be maverick no more, okay? You're not this young, full of energy guy. To now be fair, I looked like, up the rest of the guy. <laughs> the what the cost yeah they look pretty bad no he looks no like i mean like for their age they look appropriate but tom cruise he's kind of immortal yeah I he think is. those thetons or whatever in your blood <laughs> yeah from exactly Scientology. from they Scientology, work out, yeah, yeah. holding onto those e-meters yeah. the fact of the matter is um they've resurrected him again for this new maverick role or whatever and he's going right. to play top gun again but now they've removed 
both the Taiwanese flag and the Japanese flag from his jacket simply to appease the Chinese censorship and to ensure that the movie, at least attempt to ensure the movie gets shown in China. And this is what we don't need. Okay, we don't need history to be rewritten because Top Gun is a historical document, okay, of like 1986 or whatever it is, America. It's history, okay? Don't rewrite history. <laughs> don't take history and flush it down the toilet just because of an authoritarian government, all right? Agreed. Okay? Uh, I want to see them reverse that before the movie comes out. They won't. I think it'd be really our word if they don't. If they don't, then it's, they I, suck. I told you, remember I made a prediction. I said in the next few years, it's going to be very unfashionable to censor for the CCP. Because yeah. too many people are, are cognizant of what's happening now. Yeah. Before you could do it. You know, they used to do it because they wanted to, excuse me, they wanted to pull the wool over people's eyes, right? Yeah. The average American didn't know that this was happening. Sure. So they don't give a shit. If I asked a neighbor or something and said, hey, go knock on the door and be like, did you watch that movie with that 3D Pixar movie or something? And see, they didn't have a map of China in there or a map Dude, of Taiwan. <laughs> they don't give a shit. Nobody They're knows. They're flying into the danger zone with this one. You know? <laughs> I'm sorry, but this kind of thing takes my breath away. All right? So Top Gun references aside. Yeah. Um, and you're just sitting on more. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I am. It, it continue. If you ask them, they wouldn't know. Mm. Right? They just wouldn't know. No. Now, nowadays, because China is such a hot topic, people do know. Right? People do know. So I think it's going to be very unfashionable to censor for China in the future. Yeah. Don't. don't <laughs> okay. I'm not that cold. <laughs> oh, jeez. Iceman <laughs> over here. Yeah. No, um, seriously, yeah. though, don't mess with Top Gun. Okay. Uh, just to keep, just to remind everyone, there is a straw poll in the chat right now and in the description, mm -hmm. Rammstein versus BTS. I quite literally <laughs> think no one's ever made a poll comparing those two entities in the world. Yes, you know uh, who I we'll want to win. <laughs> we'll check. There are people going ape in the chat it's great. for this. Yeah, we got our great. numbers, our concurrent viewers, up because of this poll. It's good. You guys keep, love these polls. You got to do it, man. Rammstein versus BTS. Weird. No, it's <laughs> it's very correct. Is uh, what I'd say. And don't vote based on our purpose. You're team Ramstein, I'm team BTS, but yes. but don't vote based on that principle. Now, vote vote on, what you like. L listen to your heart. It'll tell you what to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is listen to your heart in No, it's Top not. Very correct, though. Oh, okay. okay. Right? Okay. So, don't goose this up. Okay. Jeez. Uh, All right. By the way, I got to just talk about this footage in the background because we're moving on to something else here, which is games. It's also linked to Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. I filmed this in Huajian Bay, okay, which is that electronics district in in, um, in Shenzhen. And I was like, what the hell is this guy doing? Okay. He's got his phone, okay, <laughs> on one of those like lamp stand like things. You yeah. know, those like yeah, yeah. right in front of his face. For those of you who can't see this at home, he's got a phone on like a little mount right in front kind of, of like his face. Like a little tripod, yeah. And then he's oh, like one of those lamp wire things that you can yes, bend. Yes, exactly. Bendy it's a bendy lamp. And he's got a keyboard and a mouse plugged into his phone using a like a, a weird dongle type thing. Yes. Okay. And he's playing Fortnite. I think it's Fortnite. No, it's PUBG. Oh, PUBG. I always get them confused. Yeah. He's playing PUBG on his phone with a keyboard and a mouse. It's the most bizarre and stupid It's so small. It's not thing. even a big phone. <laughs> yeah. It's really stupid. But I mean, the fact of the matter is uh, in China... Mob the reason why mobile payments and all that took off and the reason why everything is based on your mobile is because most people don't have access to a computer in their homes. Mm -hmm. That's why internet cafes are still a thing, but everyone has a mobile phone. So there's so many things weirdly like kind of around mobile phones. You can do everything on a mobile phone, but he's busy playing a game with a keyboard and a mouse on his mobile phone, which is bizarre. And I think it's going to lead to his eyesight getting worse than it already is. That's an old wise tale, but... I feel um, like it's not good for you to do that. To, to be that to be that close up to a phone no to that like <laughs> this tiny little it's not that it's this tiny little thing and he's just like trying to do anyway it doesn't matter. i don't think it's good for his back yeah to be hunched over like that now that has nothing to do with what we're talking about no this is meant to be in the background while i pulled up uh, another stat that just happened or yeah something thing. else to do with gaming now. so you guys know um i put out a video not that long ago um that mm -hmm. the chinese government limited uh, video game playing time to three hours a week. So you got yes. Friday, Saturdays, and Sunday nights, right? Yeah. For for Chinese kids. Yeah. What they're using is uh, facial recognition technology to make make sure. So previously they limited uh, stuff based on your ID, your national yeah. ID, but people were selling IDs, right? Yes. Or borrow. You can borrow someone's ID that doesn't mm -hmm. play, and you get mm -hmm. more hours. Sure. So now they're going to use facial recognition technology to make sure kids are not playing um, on school nights. Yes. Kids are pissed off. 
Of right. course. <clears throat> Not only that, uh, what's happened is that China is now telling game companies, I'll just sum it up. I yeah. don't need to read stats. Uh, game companies to not brag or talk about their profits anymore to make it so game companies don't look like a good endeavor to get into basically right in order to stop games being popular and they're also increasing the time that it takes for a game to get approved for the chinese market yes effectively stopping new games from entering the chinese market right now mm. uh, very crazy xi jinping's crackdowns are coming left and right right now yeah, it's really insane are. But what we thought was funny about this, uh, when we were reading through the Chinese internet, there's a couple of theories going around on the Chinese internet as, yeah. as to why this is. Now, if you want to piss off people that were kind of placated before, and they're like, whatever, Xi Jinping's a douche, but I don't care. Yeah. In order to piss them off, you take away their freaking video games. Sure, just take away their like freedom to do what they want. Right, because you can make them... It's kind of like they keep calling it like uh, electronic drugs or whatever. Yes. Talk about a great way to make a populace just kind of shut up while you go be a t tyrant. Yes. Why would you take that away? I know. I it know. seems foolish. Yes. But the, the, th the theory is... The Chinese government has done really stupid things to try to get the birth rate up. Yeah. So they're they made this two-child policy, then three-child policy, and then they're going to remove it all together. Yeah. And then they're going to incentivize people to have kids, right? Right. I have a theory that they're going to punish people for not having kids. Yes. The reason is they have to fill the demographic gap. There's mm -hmm. too many, There's not enough young people to replace the old people, right? Right. So they're going to have a not not a good working age population. It's going to basically hit the problem that Japan had before it's rich. China's yep. not a rich country. It's a fairly poor country. So mm. you're in a situation where the Chinese government's trying all these things to try to get kid, people to have kids. So there's rumors on the Chinese internet. And again, this is just a joke. Just a joke rumor, yeah. Uh, but I mean, you never know <laughs> sure, <laughs> with sure. the CCP. But Chinese netizens are saying they're going to try to pretty much ban all video games so that instead of going to be an incel and like play video games all day, kids are just going to bang. And, and, and have kids. And have kids. And they said, if you've noticed, you've seen a lot less propaganda about unwed pregnancies and all this kind of stuff, which <laughs> they tried sure. to prevent before. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they hopefully kids, these teenagers just get bored and have a bunch of babies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which, I, yeah. hey, maybe, maybe it's unofficial. You yeah. Know, you never who knows? Know. Who knows? Um, but it is pretty, yeah. pretty awful what they're doing. Cutting we off. we have, we both have a theory about why steam is allowed in China. Maybe you can tell them. That. Well, you you go with yours. Okay. First. Yeah. My theory is that because there's barely any games that are allowed. Yeah. Um, they have to pass such stringent, yeah. you know, regulation and stuff uh, to be allowed in the Chinese market. I think it's so that it's kind of like the Hollywood situation. Yeah. The game companies will say, "Hey, we can get the Chinese market. People will pay money in China. They won't pirate it. They'll yeah. buy it on Steam if we pander to the Chinese market." Yeah. Right. So you see, like this game, this is like some. To be honest, it looks terrible. But yeah. this is a, a, I hate this country ball shit. Yeah, it's whatever. It's so country stupid. Ball game. Yeah. This country ball thing is, yeah. um, you you pick your country and then you have these little balls and you fight against each other. But one oh, of their, that's when they. <laughs> oh, this is just examples of censorship. Yeah. This is from promotional materials from Kingdom Hearts. They airbrushed Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh out. out of it. They this was on the promotional materials. Yeah, I remember. They airbrushed yeah. it. Yeah, because they were worried about Xi Jinping. So in this Country Balls game, you can see in the yeah. top corner, you have uh, uh, what Winnie is the supposed Pooh. to be Winnie the Pooh slash yeah. Xi Jinping. So it's kind of a joke, right? Yeah. And that should be a lot. Someone made that yeah. game. So this is banned, right? Because of that, obviously. In China, China said remove it. It's banned off Western platforms because of this as well. So yeah. my theory is that China allows Steam in China just so it can censor yeah. for Westerners. Yes, I think that's that's what yeah. we, we talked about is they allow it so that Steam thinks, oh, we've got a bit, of, bit in the market, but we better appease China. Right. There have already been a bunch of games that have been taken off of Steam because of Winnie the Pooh references and things like that. Correct. It's happened in the past. Correct. Anyway, cool. So, um, so yeah, anyway, that was just some some old, uh, older, re that's a newer reference, but older references coming up here about Chinese censorship in games. They, uh, mm -hmm. when World of Warcraft was popular, they removed all the skeletons, skeletons yeah we already showed stuff that stuff like that We've this got is the, funny you can talk about this a the Gwent bit. game I covered this in my video but yeah. if you guys didn't see it, it's funny from Witcher 3 which is ridiculous um, never played Gwent but a lot of people do they had to we talked about this already last oh, do we, yeah. yeah I mean skip forward they it's just, just from the same court, yeah they so. just kind of replaced swords with spoons and things like that right yeah we did of, talk uh, about this you know any like the, the one on the left the normal version where someone's kissing someone they took that out and just put the woman standing there by herself Right. Which is stupid because it's not even like lewd or it's not lewd. sexual or anything. No, it's just, just about kiss. to give a kiss. I guess not allowed to kiss people in China. You'd think they'd promote that to get some more babies out there. Let's be honest though. Um, like 
kissing in public is not a thing in China. Yeah, no, you know? absolutely not. I at, at first, like when I my first girlfriend in China, I couldn't understand why she didn't want to, you know, even hold hands or kiss in public because it's just not a thing. You know, it's weird. I made a video about that a while back. Um, anyway, we don't need yeah, to look at these no, more. We, we covered this. We just wanted to show you. This is an example of how the games industry does it too. Yeah. Um, why do you have that? Shot? That's just been the same video. <laughs> Remember how dodgy about, that was? I was talking about how don't mm -hmm. pretend China pretends like it's a, like a moral, non-sexual country because there's prostitutes we everywhere. Were in this, we were in this um, little little town called Longmen, right? Yeah. And uh, this is a typical karaoke. You can see the entrance to the karaoke. They line up the girls. They're actually brothels. Yeah. Um, and you go in there to sing karaoke or whatever, and you choose whichever girls. They all come in the room. You choose the ones you want to sing with you. And then, you know, it's, most of them are also brothels. We don't go in them, so we film from across the road yeah, so I with pulled, a Zoom Yeah, camera. I pulled up on my motorbike and I whipped out my, my handy cam. Actually, got, got it right. Yeah. Here. Well, one of them. This is, yeah. you know... So whip this thing out. This thing's got an incredible zoom. It's crazy. 30 times, right? Yeah, 30 times. Clear image zoom. It's optical. Uh, that's how I filmed that stuff in North Korea. Remember? Yeah, yeah. With this. So anyway, so I'm sitting there on my bike, and I whip it out. And I, start I was there. Yeah, you were, you were right next to me, yeah. And I was freaking out. Yeah, exactly. We were both freaking out because we the started pimps, to get dude. attention, and the pimps started, like, people started to see us, and we had to get the hell out of dude, there. Dude, two pimps. Two white guys <laughs> filming illegal activities. Yes. Right? The pimps were pissed. They're breaking the law. Yeah. They don't want to get exposed. No. Right? So we were, we were bolted. After yeah, that. we got the hell out of there. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's where this clip comes from. For those of you who wanted, were wondering about it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, Time for us to move on to yes. our next segment. But we got a couple super chats before we do that. Uh, Guac Ray TM says, what jobs can allow why I get in Asia with Mandarin? Um, I don't know. Be a translator. Yeah, if you're good at Mandarin, you can do translations. I got yeah, a friend, a friend who does, does that. Yeah, a friend of mine yeah. does that. Frederick, he does it in Taiwan. Makes a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> Frederick York. What is the name of the British guy who invested the Corona's or, uh, origin? Oh. Peter, Peter, Peter. Oh, yeah, something. Peter. Balsack. Yeah, good, yeah, good point. Peter Balsack. Peter Balsack is his name. You know, right. I tell you what. Who was it again? He Pete? didn't. Peter Dazak. No, it's Peter. No, it's... Yeah, Peter Balsack. That's, That's him. right. Um, yeah, <laughs> Gustavo Morales. You mentioned earlier that your grandparents fought in World War II. Are they still alive? I'd be grateful if you could share some more details. Um, how, how about your grandparents? Yeah, he was fought in World War II. He's 94 now, and he's mm. still alive. Um, yeah. Talk to him about it all the time, and he's totally lucid. He's an awesome stand-up guy, and he's very fun to talk to. Yeah, my grandparents are all dead. I think every single one of them. Yeah, uh, you're yeah. older than me, though. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway, my grandfather, my mother's Press side. Rest in peace. Dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. No, it's totally, that's what happens <laughs> to grandparents, man. <laughs> yeah, they do. Um, he he fought uh, in the Royal Air Force and he flew down to South Africa in an amphibious bomber. He was an engineer on an hmm. amphibious bomber, and that's how he got got to South Africa. Mine was an engineer for yeah. the, Air, the Navy's Air Force. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah and on my father's side. Um, uh, the guy fought against Rommel or whatever mm -hmm. in you know in the Africa Corps or whatever he fought against Rommel, and actually I think he handed the troops over to Rommel or something in surrender or something. That's like cool. That. We mm -hmm. having grandpa battle. Yeah, I'm joking. No. Um, my grandpa actually designed the gun sights for the F-16. Mm. You can look that up too. It's a great plane. Yeah. <clears throat> Very uh, cool. So he's in some credits for some of those old uh, F-16 Falcon yeah, those, and stuff. Those That's games. cool. Yeah, I'll cool. look it up. Uh, power shift. Mm. Tacit turn at blah, 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 blah. Uh, he says they want to see karaoke videos of us singing. Maybe it's, we will do that again. We put it in one of those videos. Yeah, we could dig some more up somewhere. Oh, terrible stuff. Bengal Tiger NYC says, "Are video games companies fighting the new ban?" No, yeah. you, I'm telling you right now that if they try to put up a fight, they'll be shut down completely. Yes. So big companies like Tencent, who I worked for in the past, by yeah. the way, they're smart. They know that if they get on the wrong side of the CCP, that they're they're done. Right. Just like Alibaba's Jack Ma, they'll be, they'll be screwed over. Um, so yeah, they don't fight. They just kind of s silently go along with it and they grumble about it. Case Calls 93 says, does Vivi speak Portuguese because she lived in Macau? No one speaks Portuguese in Macau, um, except for the Portuguese people. It's like less than 1%. Mm. Um, people speak Cantonese and Mandarin and English. Also, will your wives make new content? No. Mm. or are they busy making <laughs> conquering northern america now we're not gonna they're not gonna be making videos anymore yeah uh, you know the problem is we the, don't we don't need to feed into yeah. that <laughs> no, i mean the, the absolute problem is there's no point in involving them because we get attacked too much yeah. so we wouldn't want to bring trouble on them no. they're, they're not involved in what we do no. 
South Tian Lady, thank you very much for becoming a member. David Newfeld says, I learned a South African slang from a former South African colleague. Mm -hmm. uh, have you considered naming a segment of the channel called How Is It Going China? Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. You know, we do say China a lot in South Africa, but it's like, how's it my China? Mm. Just means my friend. My, it's mate, you yeah. know, because friend. it's Cockney yeah. slang, actually, from China plate, right. mate. I get it. Yeah. You know, just like you say. I was trying to ultimately, like, translate it so everyone can understand friend. Yeah. Yeah. Friend, yeah. So it's kind of like when you say investment banker, wanker, you know, he's a right James Blunt. He's a, you know, you get the, the idea. I'm going to have a butcher's. I mean, I'm going to have a look, butcher's hook, look, you know, that kind of thing, you know. Fe he fell down the apple and pears. Yeah, fell stairs, down the stairs. You, you know that kind I, of thing. I just wanted to say, without interrupting it, I absolutely hate Cockney slang. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you got to know what it's all about, right? <laughs> uh, no offense, <laughs> I just think it's. You know, sounds... you're telling porkies. You heard that before? Yeah, Por yeah. Pork pies, lies, lies yeah. telling lies. You know. I get it, and I understand it. I just <laughs> think it's pretty R word. You telling you telling porkies, mate? <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Winston, I go on about. <laughs> there are some aspects of British uh, slang that we just can't get no. on board with. No, exactly. It's, sometimes they. Just make things up. Yeah, they just do. words. Just words. <laughs> yeah, Co cod's waddling tea twiddler or something. Yeah, it'll just, make sense. Yeah, you know? and then everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. anyway, yeah, you want to you want to insult someone without like uh, you, without them knowing correctly? Just say you're a right James Blunt. Yeah, and yeah. if they don't speak Cockney, Cockney slang, slang, then they won't know what you're talking. He's about. He's a right banker. That one. Koala twelve oh three says never forget September eleventh. You're right. Uh, it'll be tomorrow. Tomorrow, right? yeah. I won't. I'll never forget. Of course. Mm -hmm. I was in Spanish class and I wheeled in that TV. I don't know if you had this in South Africa, but they used to wheel in a TV on a big cart, and it'd be a big CRT TV, and they'd have like the VHS player down. Oh, there. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. When nine eleven happened, they wheeled in a TV. <laughs> oh, they did. <laughs> but it, no, I was working for a big construction company called oh, Marion okay. Roberts. I was the IT uh, network uh, administrator yeah. guy. And I remember they wheeled in this massive big CRT and everyone was watching when the second plane okay. hit Same. everything was Same. crazy. Everyone was really like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, mm. we, I didn't think it was real when it happened. No, it was bizarre. I thought it was literally, I thought it was a stunt. Yeah. Like gone wrong. Yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah. Uh, Never forget. He says, here's some five free $5 eucalyptus money. Thanks. Thank you, you are the koala. You're the one that needs the eucalyptus <laughs> money, bro. Indeed. But thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Tyler Durden 33333, would you guys be able to look up the Chinese law for offenses foreigners have been charged with and translate it? Uh, if, it, if public, I mean, if you could send it to us. Yeah. I'm interested in how terms such as spy and state secrets are defined. Yeah. I mean, it's defined however they want to define it. You know, that's the it's problem. It's usually a bullshit. It could uh, be anything. Charge. You know, yeah. they could really just nail you for anything. Dan Kitchatori says, was recently thinking of your Sissy Pants podcast last week, and I saw a interestingly haired man wearing skinny jeans a gray haired man a gray haired man i'm i'm gray <laughs> yeah. power shift says great podcast yesterday see milk what i think he means your, oh my video, video yeah. oh thank you i appreciate that mm -hmm. is that what we're calling them these days <laughs> thank you man yeah. uh as far as ccb's rocket technology goes i heard stuff like it was lightning uh lighting a turd on fire and seeing if it flies thoughts i mean we won't know until we get our hands on i say us other countries get their hands on... The fact of the Chinese matter is that the Chi technology. Chinese military still use Soviet engines in their top-of-the-line jets. Yeah. So that means that their uh, you know, jet propulsion technology and stuff still hasn't gotten very far. They have to use Soviet stuff. Or, and you know, they, don't, they haven't stuff. seen combat. But the fact of the matter is that they don't need to develop anything well because no. they're so good at stealing uh, intellectual True. property. They'll just steal the latest uh, technology, so don't worry about it. Anyway, time for us to move on yeah, to our, sure. our Wumao Corner. Now, Wumao Corner, everybody, is where we talk about kind of hate and what's going on when it comes to the nationalists and all that. And this is kind of related in a way what we're going to talk about today. And it's uh, Mr. Blackface himself... Justin Trudeau. <laughs> have you ever seen that uh, picture? We, well, yeah, we've we, included we look, it. Yeah, we should have included it. I'm pretty it. sure we have before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of hilarious. I think he was going for an Arabian Nights kind of a thing. But uh, he himself was the knight. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, what was he going for <laughs> there? It's know. pitch black. Yeah, it's really kind of crazy. <laughs> Nobody looks like that. Anyway, there. um... Looks like he's finally come to his senses here. <laughs> oh, dude. I'm going wearing to... black face in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. He finally woke up. Yeah, he did. He was like, well, we're not going to do that again. Actually, he did it more than once, eh? Yeah. Well, what what I want to say is we usually throw Justin Trudeau into the... He's almost like a Wumao sympathizer. Yeah. He's very, very open to China. Yes. Unfortunately. Too much to the detriment of his country. It's 
bad. But yeah. a big thing happened. Yes, okay, this is uh, Justin Trudeau tweeted this out. He said, <clears throat> and I quote, let me put on my blackface here. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Houses shouldn't sit empty when so many Canadians are trying to buy a home. So, we're going to ban foreign ownership in Canada for the next two years and tax the existing vacant foreign-owned properties. Now, that is squarely aimed at China. Yeah. Okay? Of course, he can't say that. For CCP that. officials yes. trying to move money now, out. Now, we personally know a lot of rich Chinese people mm -hmm. who have done exactly this. Mm -hmm. Okay, whether it's in Canada or Australia or here in the States... When you have a wealthy person in China, they don't necessarily have to be a corrupt official. They could just be wealthy. Yeah. I mean, but most of the time, okay? <laughs> when they have money, they know that it's not safe in China. Absolutely not. Because if you get investigated for corruption or if there's any kind of weird thing, the government can seize your assets like this. They can just stop everything. It all belongs to them. So what they do is they funnel their money out into other countries. And the way they do this, the most popular way, is by buying real estate. Now, they do it through various different means. They either buy themselves, like in Canada for quite a, quite a while, you were allowed to buy yourself a, uh, a passport, basically. Buy yourself a citizenship with an investment visa. Yeah. Right? You could do that. So what you would do is you'd uh, buy your investment visa, and then you would invest that money in buying a property. But then you leave it you leave it vacant. But there's your money. It's sitting in property over there. What? Oh, are you looking up Dashan's blackface? Oh, someone said he, uh, Justin Trudeau did brown face. So yeah. I pulled up the picture. It's just jet black. It's really. Because he's standing next to like Middle brown Eastern people. people. Yeah, brown yeah. people. Yeah. But I looked up He's Dashan. the color of their beards in that picture. Correct. Mm -hmm. More importantly, Dashan, Dashan. Because he's not even in character. No. He's just wearing a normal suit. Yeah. Dashan is the most famous white person in China. Yeah. Um, if you look up Dashan blackface, you'll literally pee yeah. your pants. Anyway, continue. Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt. Sorry. Just... Another way that they do it is through what's called parachute kids. So uh, the rich officials or the rich Chinese uh, will send their children to uh, study abroad, get a student visa. But, I mean, let's be honest. You've, you've seen those guys <laughs> driving around in their Ferraris and their Lamborghinis and stuff. They're not really there to learn. They're just there to have a good time. And they're there to funnel the money out. So that, because when you have a student visa and you're kind of a resident in the country as, on your student visa, you can buy property. So what they do is the parents send them the money to buy the property. They buy the property and they buy property in areas where there's good schooling usually. Yes, correct. That kind of thing. And they push the real estate market through the roof. And this is something you've seen just in the last couple of decades now around the world. Australia, Canada, New Zealand, America, you're seeing this artificial inflation of real estate specifically because of all the money coming out of China and because China, Chinese people are not allowed to invest in property correctly in China. It's a 70-year lease. Mm -hmm. You can buy a really expensive apartment. And yeah. yes, it is an investment. You can speculate, you can sell it, but it's never stable. When you buy a property in the West, it's yours for life and you can pass it down to your children and all that kind of thing. So it's a much more um, appealing option to invest money. And so a lot of corrupt officials and a lot of legitimately rich Chinese people have been buying up Canada and Australia and America and Germany and wherever else foreigners are allowed to buy property and to the detriment of the local population. And I say that because housing prices have got so outrageous in some of these areas, especially if you look around the universities here in California where there's massive Chinese population because there's a huge amount of Chinese students. Yeah. The real estate is through the roof. I could never afford it. A local American who grew up in the same area could never afford it. So it has been a bad situation all around. And who benefits from this? The Chinese officials and the, the rich Chinese people that are funneling, laundering, getting their money out it's of China. It's one thing to go move and, and go move. That's fine. Yes, that's, that's, that's totally okay. Immigration is great. Problem is, is the corrupt officials and the people that buy the house and don't even live in it. Yeah. Now, this is the thing. One can't go around blaming Chinese people and say, oh, look, no, no, this no, Chinese no, no, person no, no, no. is uh, driving up the market. Like, let's hate, on, let's hate on them. That's not the purpose of what I'm saying now. I'm just explaining how it all works. When the, when the system allows mm. for corrupt officials to take advantage of it, it's the system that needs to be changed. Okay? Correct. Because it doesn't matter... It doesn't matter what, what country it is. It doesn't right? matter about the country and it doesn't matter which way because if, if it wasn't real estate, it would be something else. Yep. Okay. 
But because real estate, the real estate market is open to foreigners just coming and buying it, buying up the place. Yeah. And completely without any real, like, I don't know, rules to stop them from going overboard because they won't just buy one. They'll buy multiple properties, invest in a lot. There needs to be some kind of curb. And looks looks like Justin Trudeau's kindly kind of figured it out. Like, listen, when you have someone buying property in an area, driving up the market and then leaving it vacant because it's just an investment. Yeah. It's just speculation. It's just there so they can get their money out of China. That needs to be penalized. Right. You know what? You should buy a house to bloody live in the house. Okay? Correct. That's why you're buying it as a foreigner. Why would you buy a house? You buy it, you put your family in there. If your student son and daughter are here studying, yes, that's nice. And that's nice. great. Buy a house buy for a them house, to stay. live in it. Yeah. But that's what's been happening a lot is that properties, especially in Canada, are sitting open and vacant while, while actual Canadians cannot afford housing. So I'm glad to see that Justin Trudeau is wiping off that that black paint, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and growing a pair and actually addressing the situation. Actually, yeah. I... Uh, I mean, I, there probably will be a gray area. Yeah, it's of weird course. Weird loophole, they'll, but... It, there'll be tons. It'll it's, stifle it. It might send a bit of a message. Yeah. You know, they'll pay people by proxy. They'll do yeah. all sorts of stuff. Australia has that problem. Foreigners aren't allowed to buy property yeah. there, but there's loopholes. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, I uh, replied to him. I said, yes, driving up the real estate market to ridiculous heights. And all it is is a way to move money out of China and launder bribe money. And uh, unfortunately, of course, I'm generalizing here. There are legitimate people I know who moved to Canada from China and from Hong Kong and of so course. on. Of course. Who legitimately moved there, bought a house to live there and to actually contribute to society there. But a lot of the, the houses that are sitting empty are from people who have only bought a bloody house. And those people are not contributing to Canadian tax. No. They're, not, they're not working there. They're not providing any money to help with the country. They're just using it as a bank of sorts. Correct. You know? Um, That's Walmart great. Corner. Let's get a couple, uh, uh, just a couple super chats and we'll go straight into our worldview. What do you sure. say? Sure. Uh, big Fro Man so 427 says, many Americans believe in conspiracy theories. Are there any big conspiracies that are common amongst Chinese people like Flat Earth or aliens? Um, there's definitely conspiracies. Peking Man. Peking Man's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Peking man. A lot of Chinese people believe that they come from a completely different ancestor to the rest of us. Right, unless you're Chinese. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, mm. Rum, Rum Runner says, with how badly animals are treated in China, are blood sports like dog and cockfights big there? I mean real cockfighting, not the kind that Zhao Lijian likes. <laughs> oh, why did I read that? Nice, that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, they do have that there. They definitely do. Um, uh, oh yeah oh yeah there's some weird shit there's this one uh, not a tribe they're actually Han people it's but it's part of a certain area I believe it was in Guangxi Guangxi mm -hmm. and they have this festival where they get these bulls like these almost like a shui nyo a, yeah so a water like an buffalo. ox yeah ox, water yeah. buffalo ox yeah big horned ones right yeah and they get them mad they like, whip them until they're bleeding and stuff mm -hmm. like, like with metal you know? okay. And then the it's like bullfighting, but with each other. And the bulls are just ripping each other's guts out with their horns and stuff. But then the people like get involved and they get all messed up. It's I've never crazy, seen that. crazy stuff. Yeah, it's wild. Mm, no. Anyway, there's there are there are things like that. Yeah, it's unfortunate when there are no animal cruelty laws, anything goes. And unfortunately, yeah. it, it gets pretty bad in China. Control Review says, considering both Chiang Kai-shek and Mao were authoritarian, why and how did Taiwan get rid of it, whereas mainland China did not? It's because of the difference in communism and nationalism. No, it's about the constitution. The constitution of the nationalist China, had, like Chiang Kai-shek was a horrible dictator. Yeah. But the paperwork was there for reform. Right. And also, when you break away, right, when you had Taiwan knowing that they didn't want to be back part of mainland china they had they went in a different direction yeah. right and the people yeah. spoke the people stood up and they said f this i just call it evolution it's evolution yeah yeah political evolution because here's the thing um the communist system didn't work no okay look at china it didn't work no it's only when they opened up in 1979 that china started to grow prosperous before that it was actually incredibly stagnant it was horrible a horrible horrible situation how many tens of millions of people died of starvation and all the other crap that came along with it. They open up to capitalism and allow foreign investment. Suddenly China starts to become proper, prosperous and grow. Now they're closing up again with their cultural revolution 2.0. Now it's going to go back to the bad old days. It'll be, there'll be a period of kind of okayness for probably another 10 years or so. And then it's going to just maybe shorter. Who knows? It's going to just keep regressing. So, the people of Taiwan realized it was a bad system, and rather than just pretend to keep this 
bad system on life support, they moved on and evolved and they've become a fantastic country. Yeah. Correct. Uh, Fabian M says your channel info says the streams are on Thursday. Uh, thanks. We'll update that. Oh yeah. No, thanks for the videos. I love watching them and think you support what you do. Thank you. Mas says, yeah. mm -hmm. isn't Xi Jinping part of the lost generation? Yep. And I yeah. think you can understand why he's such a awesome man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gustavo Morales. What are the chances that Xi Jinping gets overthrown and the power inside of the CCP? Uh, mm -hmm. or has he purged all his rivals? Not all of them. I would say unlikely, but a possibility. Yeah. Uh, dark, Rendarius says, I th I'm thinking my pants are made of cotton. <laughs> uh, beware of the evil uncle eye. Exactly. Uh, well, yeah, well let's move on to sure. worldview, guys, where we talk about uh, something to do with China, but it's kind of got to do with the world. It's like what's new, but a little different. And in <laughs> fact, specifically because this one takes place in <laughs> China. straight up China view. Yeah, so. Uh, worldview um, is never really about the world. No, it never is really. Okay, let's take a look at this. This was spotted in Shenzhen. Uh, someone yeah. took a photo. This is a sign warning you not to hire f illegal foreigners. That's right. Foreign tutors. Okay. Or, and, or teachers. Yeah, or teachers. And it's showing you that there's uh, a lot of uh, money to be lost. You can be fined uh, 10,000 you know, RMB per person uh, in certain circumstances. Okay. Yes. So if you use uh, a foreigner. Yeah. Okay. So remember how we talked about the fact that these training centers have been shut down and it's forced a lot of foreigners into the private teaching market. And that means they'll go into your house and they will teach your kid kind of off the books, not kind of completely off the books. Yeah. So, you know, it'll be like 5 PM or whatever. Kids just come home from school. Foreigner goes to the uh, building, you know, apartment complex goes into the um, house and they'll sit there with the kids and do the English teaching or whatever it may be. And sometimes the parents, it used to happen with me, the parents would uh, kind of club together. So you'll get like four or five groups of parents from the neighborhood and they all chip in 50 RMB each or whatever. And then they get the kids all oh, to yeah. get together in the one person's house. And the foreign teacher will go to that one house after school. That's right. Okay. And teach those four or five kids or whatever it may be. This is a sign warning you that if they find out that you're doing this, you're hiring a foreigner, that you're going to get fined a shitload of money. I mean, guys, like the writing is on the wall if you're a foreigner in China. I know there's a lot of people that are not dumb. They're trying to make as much money as they can before mm. it all comes crashing down. But it is coming crashing down yeah. if you're a foreigner in China right now. And look, I would the, get out. The snitch culture is big. Yeah. And especially like when a foreigner goes into a, um, an apartment complex, the security guys and all that, they take note of that. Yeah. And they'll start asking why there's foreigners coming there. It's a matter of time. And I do you think they modeled that picture after me? I, I don't think it's a it's, it's a distant possibility. I think it I mean, might be a guy in a suit in Shenzhen with a red tie and a in a suit. Yeah, it's kind of your thing. I mean, I don't have that blonde hair, but no. like I feel like but every foreigner has blonde hair in China. That's true, according to them. I feel like they modeled that after me. Could be. Are it's you totally a legal possible. foreign teacher? No, I'm not. No. You mean, are immortalized. When well. I was there, I definitely was. Well, I was on a legitimate working visa, but I did do those side gigs, oh, which yeah. are illegal. Oh, yeah. So I mean, I am that guy. Yeah. That's the guy you got to watch out for. Watch, you know? watch out. He kind of looks like that. Remember they, they picked that redhead cartoon guy? Oh, yes. The David spy. the Spy. David the Spy. Yeah, and he buys wine or something for like and flowers for the Chinese girl, and she gives state secrets. Yeah, that's how it works. Because, yeah, you're just going to randomly give state secrets to your foreign boyfriend. Uh, what state secrets did she even give? It wasn't even anything. It wasn't oh, really. I can't remember. Yeah. You, I don't think there's any details. No, it was like, it was, there was something there. Like he goes for dinner and he's like, buys a drink. Oh, by the way, what time do you get in and out of your job yeah, or something? Yeah, yeah. And she like told him and then they arrest her. Because that's what spies in China look like. They look like white, tall gingers. Yes, exactly. Stand they out. The more you stand out. They definitely don't look Asian. The more you stand out, the more <laughs> apt you are to be a spy. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Should um, we move on to our Q&A? Uh, yeah. Okay. So guys, questions and answers time. It's where we answer your questions and you question our answers. I'm curious about that straw poll, man. What's it looking oh, like? Oh, sure. Right yeah. Uh, let's remind everyone one more time. The straw poll. Give it 10 seconds. Uh, vote for either Rammstein or BTS. Weirdest poll that's ever been thought up of. Yeah. Um, and we'll see who is the winner. Yeah. And I think that's about time. Yeah, do host BTS. Votes. Do ha Hey. <laughs> Let's take a look. What's I'm just trying like? to be diplomatic, guys. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, okay, which is better, Ramstein versus BTS? Let's check the results. Oh yes! Wow, Ramstein, Ramstein clear for the victory. win. That's oh. freaking awesome. Hey. We have, that means we got a great audience. I'll be totally honest with you. I mean, <laughs> I, I much prefer That's Ramstein. That's so cool. But don't let anyone know that I'm actually a big fan of Ramstein. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, uh, interestingly enough, mm-hmm. with the K-pop thing, my sister—I was hanging out with my sister, right? Mm. And she likes BTS. She's a big okay. fan of BTS. Makes sense. And she was saying how their older stuff is much better than their newer stuff. And I, I'll be honest with you. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to cause any ruffles. Like the old songs, like Mike Drop and stuff, they're like really punchy and cool. New songs, it's like Disney movie stuff, dude. Okay, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, the fall of BTS and the rise of Rammstein. <laughs> <laughs> completely so cool. out of date, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. But well, they're timeless. Anyway, yeah. um, I, I, li- I listen to some K-pop and I got to say, I kind of like Red Velvet. Um, which is a girl group, kind of like their vibes. Yeah, if you couldn't see the music videos, you wouldn't like them. Actually, listen to it. I listen to it. <laughs> I listen to their music first, and then you visualize the music videos. No, the because they're time. they're doing the soundtrack for this K drama I was watching. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> All right, let's just move on. Shall we? I'm watching this K drama on Netflix right now. It's <laughs> called the. Uh, yeah. Oh, what is it freaking called? Well, um, you see, that's how important it is if you can't remember the name. I gotta find out. No, because last time I brought this up, we got a lot of people uh talking about talking about it it's called um oh vincenzo was amazing i think you'd like that one but i already recommended that to you and you didn't listen mm-hmm. so nope. you still didn't even watch the freaking trailer of a walk to remember no i didn't not yet tell what's wrong with you yeah you're not a man of it's, your you're not being a man of your word it's probably called a letter to remember or something what is this thing called get over it son of it no because people are gonna be asking me okay love struck in the city no what's going on it's like the biggest one right now. There's literally one they called Sissy Fan- Sissy Pants. No, there isn't. Whatever, Sissy Fizz. Is it really? Yeah, it's called Sissy Fizz. What is that? I don't know anything about that one. Um, I This is bothering me. Pay, uh, make people happy. <laughs> How am I supposed to make people happy? You're talking about K-pop. It's making me read depressed. This, read this. Okay, what's the next? Uh, Mad Rocks. From Mad Rocks 303. I work for a global company and we have an office in China. Is there a way to find out who the CCP person is there? Wasn't there some leak? Um, in IT, that matters. Scary, the implications due to what we do. Um, I think there was. There was like some leak that was online. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. remember where it was. I didn't look at it. Look, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, a lot of the Chinese staff will be um, Communist Party members anyway. Okay? When I work for Tencent, for instance, a lot of my students... Great people. Oh, you mean in a Chinese company? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, not well, an American company. No, not an American company. But if you're hiring local people, a lot of them, a lot of people are Communist Party members. And there's a reason for that because you get a lot of benefits being a Communist Party member when it comes to, you know, um, perks for retirement and uh, various things that you can do and you can't. So, you know, you may have quite a few Communist Party members working for you. And also, it's an unfortunate uh, reality that it, most. Obviously not all, but most Chinese nationals will always put China ahead of everything else. So if they think um, they can get an, give an edge to China by using your company in some way or the other, they may just do that. Okay, this is from, from my own personal experience. So I wouldn't worry about who's a mole, who's a CCP person. Just consider that everybody is a risk in the company including your foreign staff because a lot of the times when i say foreign i mean like whatever wherever your company's from if you're american or fr- french the french staff the american staff could get incentives from the chinese communist party or from you know agents in china to you know help them out you get approached as a foreigner in china you get approached all the time by these government little things here and there and that's how for instance they stole the wind turbine technology it was from a, a technician who was out there to outfit and install new software and whatnot on the uh, wind turbine things. They bribed him and got him a bunch of hookers and things like that, and he gave them the source code and gave them the software. So, you know, you always have to be on the lookout for everyone. Trust nobody. Make sure that you've got enough security um, steps in place to prevent the leaking of your data. That's all you can do. Read Carl Linux. Carla says... I'm awake at 4 4 a.m. in Bangkok to catch you guys live. Awesome. In a previous video, you mentioned a Chinese saying for just good enough when referring to quality. Can you write it in pinyin? Chabudo? 
Okay, yeah, Chabdo. Hi, huh? Right, Chabdo. Chabdo. Yeah, Chabdo in pinyin, C H A, and then B U, and then D U O. Ah, Chab. Sorry. He wrote it wrong oh, there. I okay. Right. Ch- <laughs> Chabudo means, you know, it's not a little off, basically. Cha means bad, so bad. You say Chala, Hala, so Cha Budo. So it's not too bad, basically. Anyway, uh, next, Roman Reyes, capitalist. Mecca communist CCP policy de- detected on sovereign soil. Lethal force engaged. Embrace democracy or you will be eradicated. Shoots lasers. Nice. <laughs> it's called Nevertheless. That is what I'm currently watching. Now, it's not a very hard name to remember. It is. Nevertheless. It's just started. It. It's fantastic. Okay. My sister texted me as she's, she's wa- I didn't know she was watching. Mm-hmm. And remember I called the BTS guy Jinmin? Yeah. She wrote in all caps, it's G Min. <laughs> okay. It's J I M I N. I apologize. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Right. Holy crap. All right. Ross Wolf, I told you about those BTS fans. <laughs> yep. Uh, I love how the, I always get TikTok ads in your video. Seriously, though, it reminds me, it seems to me that Ryan thinks that she China's economy can survive uh, decoupling from the outside. And it you know, can't. you know what really annoys me is they've been putting these Alibaba ads. Yeah. Have you noticed that yeah. on my videos me and too. on your videos? Yeah. This stupid guy is like, why would you pay twelve dollars if you pay one dollar? Get into this whole this like shit. selling yeah. selling fake crap on Amazon type thing. Stop, okay? If you support that kind of stuff, you just need to stop. I got a lot of bad things don't, to say. Don't don't support Alibaba or Wish.com. Yeah, Please don't. Yeah, it's not worth don't it. Don't support that crap. I actually have a video coming out hopefully tomorrow. It's not done editing yet, which it better uh, be out tomorrow. I'm trying my best, man. I'm trying my best. <laughs> Going to burn the midnight oil, but uh, this is going to be an important one on how you can fight back against the CCP. Right. Hmm. Gustavo Morales says, if there was truly a free election in mainland China, what kind of government do you think would be elected? I mean, I think it would be a democratic government that's pro-market. Yeah, it would Anything so. pro-market. Like, the that's Chinese the people want capitalism. Yeah, they absolutely love to you know, engage in buying and selling, owning shops, doing... It's a merc- know, mercantile society. Yeah, it always has been. This is a very unnatural system, this whole communist thing. Yes. Very unnatural. Correct. Uh, Guap Hunter 69 okay. says... Let me just read... I'm not going to read that. <laughs> what? It's a cool conspiracy theory. I have classified information. She is a polygamous extraterrestrial Kaminoan Kem- Kem- named Cardassianow. Through his go- though his goals are unspecified, it can be inferred that the blood of... Something is in danger. Who knows? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just I asked- got to give everyone a shot, man. <laughs> I got you. I just- oh, I love the 4444. Thank you so I much. I don't. How dare you yeah. say you love that? <laughs> Uh, with some Swiss francs. Buy some good Swiss cheese. Thank you very much. All Swiss cheese is good. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Ivan Gabra- uh, Gabrowski. It's not bland. Thank you. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> We've, we're on to different polls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the BGNs. Thank you very much. I don't know what a BGN is. Let's look what a BGN Probably is. A Bulgarian? Belgian, Belgian garnet. <laughs> what? <laughs> a Bulgarian. I was right. Bulgarian oh. lev. Thank Lev. you very much for the bear. Shouldn't it be BLV then? I know. Whatever. Uh, Wing083, going off what you said about the corruption gray area laws, how would Vietnam and Thailand fit in compared with China? Definitely a lot of corruption. Yeah. Uh, even more so in Vietnam, probably. Mm. Um, There's a lot of the same thing going on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Same thing. It's just we focus on China. Right? Yep. Also, yeah. it's more maliciously government involved in China. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Dark Rendarius. Siga, 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 siga. Siga, They siga. said something else. <laughs> yeah, they did. Nice. That's one. Groa. <laughs> uh, wow, it's lots of siga, chien, mian. Yes. Um, <laughs> only. Uh, that's chien. bad luck. Yeah, yeah. I can only use yeah. um, no, Which means death. Yeah, that was from Oli Oli Oxenville or something. Uh, Phil says clearly the U.S. has a higher standard of living than China. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when looking at the Chinese countryside. How does the Chinese city life compare to the U.S. city life for the average person? It looks on par. It's absolutely not on par. No, uh, look, you can have a nice city I life. I lived so in. Mad. I've I've lived in Shenzhen. I lived in. You didn't the, have a nice. You, the, then no. you're full of shit. You didn't have no, a nice city no, life. You no, lived in a box. I, yeah, I lived in a tiny box. I couldn't drink the water out of the tap. I'd be woken up at all hours of the morning because of some random like construction work either happening out on the street or inside the apartment complex, and it's all concrete. So. You know, and that was a high stand, the highest. Yeah, there was there an in expensive area anyway. in Shenzhen. Yep. Uh, in the winters, it was freezing cold because there's no insulation. It's yep. a concrete buildings. 
In the summers, it was horribly hot, but we had air conditioning, which is great. Yep. Uh, the noise is just intense. There's like a 60 decibel ambient noise in Shenzhen. At something least. like 60 to 80 decibels. It's just constant, all 24-7. Um, the quality of life cannot be compared. No. You have to worry about food safety. And Phil, I didn't mean to get mad. I just, yeah. that's so crazy mm. to think about even comparing the two. Um, and people don't seem to realize this. You get taken taken in by the bright lights and the yeah. glamour and the glitz yeah. that you see in the big cities. And, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, if you want to actually sit down and look at your actual mm. quality of life, yes, you can go to fancy restaurants. Yes, everything's convenient. You can go downstairs and there's a coffee there or there's a place to buy food. But there's a lot of basic things, just like your health. When it comes to the air quality, things like that, it's far worse in China. And the traffic. And the, the traffic. People, and the literally, noise. you almost die when you cross the road all the time. Yeah, you have to watch out for pickpockets all the time. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot it's of just things different. you just forget. It's just different. You forget. Yeah. A lot of good um, things, but actual yeah. quality of life, I'd say. It's, Not even close. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. Dude, uh, Dude Bub says, I still can't get over this milk dog thing. <laughs> you don't have to. Embrace it. Yeah, embrace the milk I, th- dog. I thought Chinese people don't eat dairy products. Do the dogs have to be artificially inseminated so they keep giving milk like cows? How's Would you thing? consider dog milk as dairy? I wouldn't. No. That's cow stuff. Because um, so goat milk is not dairy, is it? No, it's cow. I don't think so, no. So with dog milk, um, again, for people that don't know, dog milk dogs are pregnant dogs are not pregnant they've already given birth to puppies and yeah. they're lactating so they have yeah. kind of like udders you would you would imagine udders yeah they look like udders and they chase us all the time on our motorcycles it's, they're it's, wildly territorial it's yeah it's weird you don't really see that kind of thing in the west for some reason it's like they certainly they give pu- birth to puppies but i never see milk dogs well i don't think they're out on the streets like roaming around like that's attacking probably you. they're not out in the like you know wilderness guarding areas so something about lactating dogs there's milk dogs we call them is they are incredibly mean and terrifying yeah. dogs i think they get very there's probably a hormone in their yeah they're system. violent because they're protecting their puppies yeah, right yeah, yeah. so especially when our motorcycles you'd have these utter swinging dogs yeah running off screaming us. barking trying to bite your legs yeah um and some chinese people use their milk yeah and they're therefore you have milk dogs yeah i don't know why that's look so up. hard to understand yeah look it look up. it up google milk dog you'll see yeah uh david pay says this is jonggong which means four 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 chinese government or did i say it wrong he said <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah exactly clorinda yeah. Ryder. i was in california two weeks ago Love and it. passed by the desert art museum oh nice okay. uh, that's called liberty sculpture park yeah thanks for making me sound smart when i pointed it out and I explained it to my husband uh, here's some dessert on me. Thank, Thank you very you so much, much. Claire, and I will it. enjoy that dessert. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthony McNabb, love love you guys. Keeping it real. We'd love to have a beer with you guys one day. Thank Absolutely. you, Absolutely, we'd love to too. Yeah. Uh, RKS, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Umbriahu, hi guys. All the best. Keep going. Thank you very much. Thanks. Moritz Strip Matter says, rule of law doesn't exist in China. Rule of law exists with their old school of thought, the legalists. Rule of law is also quite complex in the West. There's a difference between the Anglo, German, and French. Oh, for sure. For, for sure. sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely correct. Uh, oh, son of a... Sega Chain Man. Yeah, Sega Chain Man. man. No, you've been through this stuff, haven't you? Have I? Maybe. No, I have not. No, you haven't. Okay. Wow. It's well, something happened. One. Just, just, just updated, yeah. Uh, keep up the good work. Have a good weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jordan, why is smoking such a massive issue in China? It's actually um, subsidized by the government, smoking, yeah. and keeping the tobacco industry. It's a massive state uh, industry. Mm-hmm. So I live makes- near the... China Tobacco Industry Government Party Department. Yeah. Makes a huge amount of money for the government. Yes. So they basically force it on everyone. And it's yeah. It's part of culture, you know, you can't yeah. get rid of it. It's you know, when people have meetings, when people are discussing things, friends get together, you pass cigarettes around and yeah. everyone smokes. It's like eighty percent of Chinese men of a certain age smoke. It's now, it's now down. Well, if you're talking about men in general, so from birth to, to mm-hmm. adulthood, it's fifty percent. No, yeah, but that's no. including young. That's people. what I'm saying. saying. Of that's a certain what I'm saying. If you, you know, went like up, yeah, generation. if you went up, you're na- 80, 90 Yeah, yeah, ninety percent. Yeah. 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 Uh, e plus says got a job, get some beer money on my first wage. Oh, um, awesome. oh, here's some beer money. Thank you very much. I've been watching That's your podcast great. for ages. Wish more European countries were aware about Chinese influence. Hope you, hopefully you guys catch up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Buck Nutty says new subscriber. Love you guys. Videos is curious. Has the CCP ever tried to intimidate you? <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. We have stories. Every day. Every day. Stories. And Not only stories. the CCP, but all their agents and their horrible sycophants. You know. And well, uh, they work for them. So. 
Um, but we don't like to give them fuel and inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, up, up for Ja, here's a con contribution to keep what you're doing what you're doing. Uh, I loved your video about why China will never be a world power. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. That's my new It's video. a good video. You gotta go check it out. Thank check you. out his uh, video from yesterday. So Thank it's, you. It's a Appreciate really good that. one. Yeah. Uh, because they're not liked by anyone. Bullies can't win. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Adam Yuri says, did you see Donnie Yen's most recent Yip Man yes, movie? Yes, that pissed me off. Propaganda was over the hot. And that's an example. That's what I was trying to say is Shang-Chi wasn't that. No. It wasn't. It wasn't. I watched that it. Yip Man was the biggest crock of shit that I've ever seen. That was propaganda. Yeah. It's like, ooh, foreigners bad. That yeah. drill sergeant or whatever, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. If you want to have a good laugh, though, watch it. And it's, see it's approaching Wolf Wanker it, territory. It is. It's just this caricature of like yeah. how bad foreigners are to Chinese people type right. thing. It's so, so bad. Right. That Yip Man 4 made me just... I, I was half angry, half laughing my ass off. Right. Why is it so hot in here? I don't know, man. It's totally fine. Hmm. Anyway, um... Impersonator Salt, thank you very much. Someone in the crowd with some rubles. Oh, uh, greetings. Thanks for your work uh, your work yet again. You two did a splendid job with your last two videos. Truly a God's work. P.S. Have a nice weekend. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, impersonator Salt, oops, forgot to add the message. Anyway, have you lad seen Bart Baker? He moved to China and his videos are interesting. Clearly, you have not watched my White Monkey videos. Yes, go watch his videos. White Monkey video. Yeah, it's all about Bart Baker and the like. Yeah. Septarshi Sengupta, I remember a James Bond movie uh, from the 90s where the Bond girl plays a uh, PLA spy. Western movie industries have been pandering to the CCP for decades. Do you think it was because of that? I don't know if oh, it's because of that. I don't know. I, don't, I think that would get them out. That wouldn't be allowed in China because you can't have a spy. Right. Like, you can't have a Chinese person being a bad thing in a movie. They won't allow it. Right. Remember when the Pirates of the Caribbean 3 or 4, whatever, they had uh, Chow Yam Fat? Yes. As a pirate captain in there. I went to go see it in the cinema in China, and they, I couldn't understand why he only had like two minutes in the whole movie. Because he's on the movie posters and everything. Right. right? They right. cut out all of his lines. Right. Because they didn't want to depict a Chinese person as being a negative thing, like a pirate. So everything he said in the movie. So he just suddenly appears. It was the weirdest thing ever. Like you don't get introduced to his character or anything, but he just suddenly appears for a minute or two and that was it. And I was like, what the hell? And I looked it up online. They literally cut Chai Yang Fat's complete character out of the movie just because they didn't want to see a Chinese person as being a pirate. <laughs> it's dumb. I remember, I do remember that now. I that was it. a big thing. I saw it in the cinema. I'm like, what's going on? I watched like the born, one of those born, you know, yeah, the born, born supremacy things. identity, whatever, the born shoelace, whatever it was called. And I was watching it and a fight scene started and then it was gone. I'm like, what happened? They cut out all the violent fight scenes as well. I'm like, watching a movie in China is like taking, I don't know, this can of Pepsi, pouring half of it out and adding water. And then drinking like water down and make it like hot water. Drinking water <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> water <laughs> down hot Pepsi. And that's <laughs> that's what it is watching a movie in China, a Hollywood <laughs> movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. Ryan, uh, Ross Wolf says Ryan Seacrest says, uh, <laughs> Ryan Seacrest says, 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 that's, that's really bizarre grammar. I mean, I'm struggling because I think someone used Google Translate for Probably, that. Probably, yeah. Uh, that base, he's trying to make a joke by saying that uh, Xi Jinping, Ryan Xi Crest, as he's yeah, calling him, yeah. wants to keep all of the sissy boys for himself. That's yeah, why he wants yeah. to ban them. <laughs> yep. Uh, Bjarni Christiansen says, uh, obvious possibility, Suga Chim Mian, Chim Mian, number one on the CCP Xinjiang billboard list since dropping. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Akin Jong says, hi, ADV China. It was my birthday, but we don't eat much sweets. So my mom came home with a cookie cupcake and a <laughs> happy birthday <laughs> song. Yeah. Luckily she wasn't mugged. That's hilarious. Yeah. And you got to watch out for that. I, I see you're in Canada. It's more of a problem in England from what we've yeah, seen. Yeah, exactly. It seems about it's an England thing. Yeah. The guy that, he, that poor guy, that portly man, he was wearing that suit as a garbage worker. Yes. Garbage man. Yes. Poor guy. Go watch that thing where we made, we talked about that bracelet. It the was so bracelet, funny. Yeah. Scam bracelet. If you can find that episode, it was hilarious. It's one of our best. Yeah, we love it. Jean Marc Feldman. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Marit Strip Matter comes back and says, My fiance told me about Sora Oi. Mm -hmm. Sola Oi. It's Sora, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Sora. Yeah. Uh, an AV star, so that's like a porn star in Japan. Uh, how made, did she... What? I, I, mean, I actually made a video about that. Yeah. About how she's... 
she was basically the sex education for China of my mm. generation. Because, you know, sex education didn't exist in schools and it was like too no. taboo to talk about. So everyone of my generation in China learned all about sex from her porn videos. And in fact, she came, and this is the stupid thing because I was there. I tried to go to work one day at Tencent and I couldn't. The security wouldn't let me in. And I was like, what's going on? And there was this huge queue. There's a massive thing like you've never seen. It looked literally like, you, I don't know, like a super concert going on. Like there was like thousands and thousands of thousands of people trying to get into the main building. And it's because she was there to do some promotion. For Tencent had hired her to come like be a treat for the, the, the staff. Obviously not to do anything, but, you know, to go <laughs> meet them, you know, and take some photos with the, some of the managers and stuff and sign some things or whatever as part of a promotion. So she was in ten, the Tencent building, and that's why there was this massive thing, and they wouldn't let me in the building. You know, it's that's a really good thing to bring up because that would never, ever, ever happen nowadays. No, not nowadays. Holy crap, is it a different China than when we Isn't were there? Isn't it so stupid how, like, blatantly hypocritical yeah. China is, though? Yeah. Pornography is completely yeah. banned, 100%. You yeah. may not watch pornography in China. You may not buy it. You may not produce it. You go to jail for that stuff. Yeah. So pornography is banned. They hate Japan. You're not allowed to like look up to Japan in China. Okay, no. people are smashing Japanese cars and stuff whenever they bring up this nationalist shit. But yet, everybody wants to see this Japanese porn star. How do they know about her? Because they all watch porn. Correct. Why do they like her? Because she's Japanese. Correct. I don't know, man. It's so freaking hypocritical. <laughs> it is, but I mean, it would never be allowed now. No, not now. Holy no, I mean, crap! Though they shut down that little Kyoto. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, like, they're so butthurt about yeah. stuff like that. Xi yeah. Jinping's China is different. At least back then, hypocrisy was alive and well, and it was fun. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Pokenopolis has been watching you guys for years. Figured I'd give something back. Appreciate work. Keep it up. Thank you very much. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. That's awesome. Thank yes, you. Thank That's you very so generous. much, mate. Tree Theodore says, which rain stays mainly on the plain? The one in Africa or the one in Spain? Probably Spain. Africa's got a lot of drought. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a Watson, go back to China. Heroin Thanks, Tree. Goes to China. Thank you, Tree. Uh, creates a choking hazard toy. Sorry, then what? What? Go I back know. to. Ch I don't even know what. Uh, that case was. closed ninety three. When I was deployed to Afghanistan with military, we had those DVD stores that we called them Haji shops. Most uh, funny thing, most of the movies sold were recorded in China. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. It would go through the border in Xinjiang. Yeah. Um, Jonathan Case says the only CCP pander I saw in Shang Chi was the postcard saying Macau, China. Uh, and the Mac Macau people speak Mandarin, not Cantonese. That, that's not a pander. Macau is part of China. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of is. No, but it they is speak listed. Cantonese, though. Yeah, that's just a this is an error. It was you laziness. So? It was absolute laziness. Okay, all right. Uh, there's a lot of laziness in any film that's related to China. A lot of that kind of stuff pisses me off because of the stuff they get wrong. Oh, dude, I love <laughs> I love it when well, that was that movie like when Keanu Reeves was supposed to speak Mandarin. I was like, yeah. what the hell is he saying? Or like yeah. Indiana Jones yes. in that whatever oh. movie. What is he saying? That's not even a language. Someone got paid. The to... Keanu Reeves one was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. It was really whenever like a Hollywood actor speaks mandarin yeah. and everyone's like oh wow he's so cool and i'm like what a oh, moron it's like oh. i want to like punch him what the they hell? couldn't spend an hour to get it right nope it would just take an hour no right yeah it's that's it you could teach me something in zulu or something and give me an hour for one line yeah, i'm and, gonna get it right yeah, eventually yeah so ridiculous jesus laziness yeah it really is it's so bad seth wilson why can't mainland chinese move to taiwan aren't they considered roc nationals i mean <laughs> i think he you're I'm probably joking, right? Yeah, yeah. Dragon Hero about. 14, thank you very much. Thank Charles you. Wormack, 44444. Four, four, four. Stop! <laughs> Anthony Saints, wow, you guys are wrong. Xi Jinping is Decepticon, and he's trying to destroy all the Transformers. Okay. Well, he would be a Decepticon. He would. He is a Decepticon. He'd be like a garbage truck that turns into a garbage <laughs> bag. You, you know, that would be his thing. And he's like this disgusting pile of shit. Maybe a toilet that turns into a garbage truck or something. That, that'd be him, you know what I mean? Oh, God, yeah. I can't. I'm I'm worried about the memes that are coming to the subreddit now. Yeah. <laughs> Mercy yeah, him. Yeah, we got to, what does Xi Jinping transform into? we got to see it. Well, you guys come up with yeah, it. Okay, That's cool. out of my hands. Mm -hmm. Mercy M. Tian, yeah. great work exposing the evil regime. Do you think you could make a summarized video that we can show people who have no idea but the CCP to make them aware? Uh, take a look at my video tomorrow. I think that might work. Oh, to like show people... Like what, what they're up against. How the CCP is actually affecting everyone's life. Yeah. 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 We've got lots of videos. There's a couple. Yeah, there's a couple. We watch our do. channels. But tomorrow, the one I'm putting out might be a good introduction to someone who doesn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Koala1203. My respect for Simon. Uh, I think Simu Liu. Simu Liu. 
Is it Leo? Uh, yeah, it's Leo. Just went up after speaking his own mind. Yeah, yeah. No, he seems like a great guy. Yeah. Uh, Nathan87, BTS sucks. How dare you? <laughs> and then Lou M re- replies with BTS forever. I f- we could profit off of this war. Rammstein won, though. Well, in our straw poll, yeah. And let's be fair. If you put Rammstein and BTS in a room and they had to like have a battle royale to the death, you know it would win there. Right, they're pretty old. Does a man old man strength, you know? Mm, I don't know about old man strength. <laughs> <laughs> I think BTS is in pretty good shape. Yeah, and I there's mean, more of them. There is more of them. That's true. I still, I'd still bet on Rammstein. I think it would be a fair fight. Yeah, maybe. And the Rammstein's not allowed to bring like chainsaws. Like a fairy in. fight. <laughs> They're not allowed to bring like spit flames and bring weapons and do their weird like oiled gay dances. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that might they might actually become friends <laughs> after that. Rammstein's much gayer than BTS. Yeah, you've seen their concerts, yeah, right? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, Trin, can you explain why China's disappearing celebrities to control fan culture? Mm-hmm. Um, well, are you talking about that woman, Zhao Wei or whatever? What no, they've been disappearing quite a few yeah. these, these days and like deleting them from... Mm. Dude, you know... Um, she was involved with like investment stuff. My wife was watching something last night. I actually tried to get some screenshots, but we'll bring it up maybe next time. Uh, a singer, okay, he ended his contract or whatever it was, or he decided for personal reasons he didn't want to, I don't know, be be a singer anymore, whatever the hell it was. I can't remember the exact story. But he's part of this trio singing on stage, this like big concert that they had. Uh. And they blur him out. So <laughs> They blurred him out. Every time it's like a shot of him, he's like bokeyed out. And then, like the other guys, they like superimpose they like a side them. face on of the, uh, other, of the other guys. Uh, and every time he's singing part, it'll be like a wide camera from like the roof. So you see this tiny little man on stage, <laughs> and you cannot make out his features. So weird. it's his little solo singing. It's like, or he's completely blurred out. It's so bizarre. Huh. It's a weird thing they're doing. Yeah. But you can be erased from history. Oh yeah, in China. yeah. They'll make sure. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. Uh, Lou says, "Stop making fun of BTS." R. <laughs> yeah. We're not making fun of BTS. They make fun of themselves. Um, <clears throat> Subdarsi Singhgupta says, Notice that Sea Milk's wedding was traditional style Chinese, whereas Winston's was Western style. I wonder what is more popular in China. Actually, my wedding was not. That was an engagement. My wedding was a Western style in America. I didn't actually have a Western style. And you style. didn't have a wedding. No. Maybe he's thinking with the X. Oh, yeah. you're old. Yeah. You're old. You're Lao. Yeah. You're Lao Lao Po. Yeah. Yi uh, <laughs> Qian <laughs> de Lao Po. Your yeah. ex wife. Yeah. Cha wife. Yeah, uh, I wonder which is more popular <laughs> yeah. in China. Mm-hmm. Josh Jones, we need a survey between BTS or Ramstein. You, we did. did you miss the poll? No, because the polls. Maybe the that's an old one. Yeah, yeah, it's a clean seventy-five percent. That was a good amount of votes. You guys love these polls. We'll keep yeah. them up. Seventy-five percent voted for Ramstein. That's really good. I'll actually leave it up uh, in the description so we can check, you know, for the next show. Sure. Um, Moritz Strittmeyer says Ramstein is funny. The literally. Uh, the band is literally named after the biggest air dis- disaster in Germany after World War II on the American air base of Ransch- in Rammstein. Yeah, that's mm. right. Clues. Number one, BTS, because purchase MP3 count more than streamed. This is what the fans do. They okay. have to like, promote how to get them up on the charts. I see, I see. Adam Yuri, The modern CCP seems more akin to the Nazi party based on their promotion of nationalism, xenophobia, persecution of minorities. Do you think that's more accurate to call them fascists rather yes. than communists? I'd say that's our most common question that we yes. get on here. We've both done videos about that very mm-hmm. thing. You have a video yeah. called The Nazis Are Back. Mm-hmm. I have a video called can we compare china to nazi germany please watch them i think you'll like them yes absolutely uh wing 083 can you review or talk about the bikes from top gun one and two since they're kawasaki's compare it with yours Mm -hmm. also do you have the need uh the need for speed i think i can talk about it because i bet i know about more about that bike than you do because i'm a japanese bike fan well okay that's that's entirely possible but i almost bought one okay so i wanted the 80s like uh, z1000 no no what is it zx1000 nope what is it then? It's a, it's a, it's a ZX, ninja. It's yeah, a ZX nine hundred before it was named the ninja. It's yeah. a precursor to it's a the 900. ninja. It's a okay. You win that one. It's a hundred and fifteen horsepower. Same as same horsepower as your bike, but it's yeah. a good hundred pounds heavier. Yeah. Um, no, I love I love the look of it though. I did almost yeah. buy one when we were looking for our bikes. Mm-hmm. It was on my list, but um, yeah, I got the Z nine hundred Z nine hundred RS, which I love. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we should we should ride more. We should. And yes, uh, the need for speed. I have the need for speed occasionally. Me too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trin, the tree of Tom Cruise must occasionally be refreshed from time to time <laughs> with the blood, sweat, and tears of his underpaid Scientologist interns. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> After you see the Tom Cruise tooth, you can never go back. You can never unsee the tooth. The tooth? You know oh, about the tooth. tooth. 
What? He's got one center tooth. Oh, you don't yeah, know about yeah. Tom Cruise tooth? <laughs> no, I don't know about Look Tom Cruise tooth. Okay. <laughs> Dude, this is going to blow your mind. You'll never unsee it. Okay. You will never, ever be able to unsee this. He's got one center tooth. Oh, he does, doesn't he? It's in the middle. Yeah. It's, it's one. Bizarre. I guess he just got kind of like someone smacked him in the, the jaw or something. No, it's literally just it's down right, the right down the center. You, you'll notice it, especially in the older. Th- it's right down the middle. Oh. And you're never going to not see it now. Well, there goes dentist's livelihoods. It shows you don't need to have good teeth in order to become a superstar. True that. Mm-hmm. Young says, been following your two-wheel journeys, ADV China, since four years ago. After seven months of riding school, can't believe I'm picking up my own, own Honda CB150R. That's awesome, That's Young. nice, and that's a nice little bike. Thank you I for love the inspiration. It'll be great for Singapore. Yeah. Um, you got a very cramped city there, so it'll be a good one to oh, and those, those are very uh, reliable, and yeah. they go, yeah. they go good real choice. well. I those, like are those, uh, those are those Thai, Thailand-made mm-hmm. ones. They're cool. Uh, those are good. 8T8, uh, mm-hmm. Korea has a huge K-pop soft power. Go Army! K-pop Army. Yeah. Uh, China has a she pop <laughs> or yeah. how to make music turn bad by state propaganda. And you can see that. Why mm. do you think the average Chinese person loves K pop so much? It's because their government ruins all the music and creativity. Look at they the Suga Chan Man stuff that we had to listen to. That's If you left it up to the Chinese government, which is what they're doing, and they clamp down on everything, you're left with very boring music and very uncreative crap. Yeah. So, of course, you're going to go elsewhere for your music. Remrunner says, forget BTS and Rammstein, the Mongolian band, The Who is where it's at. They're really good. Really mm. good band. Uh, Deanne Chapman, your package arrives Tuesday. Thanks, mate. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah, he's sending us something. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, you told him. Yeah, he told me. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know about this. Yeah. Ox Dark, mm-hmm. Zero Fun. English lessons were banned. Are Wu Mao at risk of punishment for speaking the enemy language? Special X Sheception or Total Eclipse of the I, Heart? I mean, I don't want to sound too alarmist, but it looks like they are trying to yeah, you know, focus in, in big time into China. And I think in the future, if people are, are showing enthusiasm in learning English, they'll probably be frowned upon. And get, you Just know. today, they made, there's more uh, speculation mm-hmm. going around the banning of English completely or yeah. moving away from English. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's going to suck. Imagine you've got someone who's there sit, sitting there reading uh, an English textbook or something, and you get like some people, oh, what are you doing over there? Huh? You're not well, you nationalist understand, enough? You understand. You're that's not the, enough? That's the problem is that when you nationalize the language, it's not about, oh, okay, now Chinese people aren't going to be able to communicate. When you say, screw the whole outside world and nationalize language to yeah. the point where it's like, okay, you're going to remove that one tool where people can actually communicate and come together, right? And yeah. actually get, like, get past all these differences. Sure. You remove that element, you can nationalize a populace real quick yeah. in a generation. Yeah, you know? well, I mean, look at the older generation. None of them could speak English. No, no. Yeah, all the Red Guard and all that. Correct. Liu M says, China hates BTS because RM recognized Taiwan as UN speech. Forgot to bring that up. That was a thing. Okay. Hmm. Uh, and go BTS for, for Taiwan power. That's, That's cool. good stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Phil, guys, I figured out how China can't solve their population problems. Let's just play Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On over the loudspeakers 24-7. Never understood why people want to bang to that song. Or I don't any, want to any hear music an old at all, man. to be honest. Yeah, I, just, actually, I'm not a music guy with no, when it just, comes just to... Not weird. to get too personal, but I don't like the whole music thing. Yeah. That's weird. Maybe if you're just chilling out and getting in the mood or something, but you know. Like nah, it's still, even that, I think yeah. it's a bit weird. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's not interested yeah. in that. Each, to each their own. Daniel Ortman, why is China upset at being called a third world country? It implies science-based medicine and cleaner air. <laughs> true. That's true. <laughs> okay. That's the original definition. Yeah. K Kathoth Swifts, thank you very much. Ry, Ryer Talk. Ryer Rock. I found mm-hmm. your channel before the whole Hong Kong revolution. Um... Uh, you made me love China and the landscape. Thank you. Hope to see you on the road in Asia soon. Thank you. Thanks very much. a lot. We appreciate awesome. that. Yeah, it was a different time back then. It, Great. Everything kicked off, really kicked off in 2019. Yeah, that's when it got real bad. Yeah, and that's when this huge, uh, massive propaganda thing where they co opted a bunch of foreigners and a bunch yeah. of weird, fl- floppy head vegetable exact lords. Exact same. Yeah. Time. At that time, all these psychopaths coming after us. If you guys go and look at the pro-CCP foreigners living in China, they all started propaganda at the identical same time, and, and they all grew exponentially. And they, it all started in 2019. You can see their unnatural growth all started in 2019. That's when they all got co-opted. They push. absolutely got co-opted by the Chinese government at that time, mm-hmm. yeah. and their channels grew insanely fast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, grape jelly. Hi, y'all. 
Long time, first time, uh, for, long time fan, first time donator. I wanted to draw you both for an art project for school, but I can't find many pics of both of you. Is there any suggestions? Thanks for your vids. Much love. Send a mm. send an email to us. We'll send you send you something. Yeah, that cool. you could draw. That I appreciate that. Yeah. Do you um, know our email address? You'll find it. Okay. Everyone can find a way to contact us. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Or no, way better, way better idea. Um, just post something on uh, some. On the subreddit. People can, people, our fans will know pictures of us together. Yeah. They can post on the subreddit for you. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And people yeah. can do art submissions and stuff. Cool. Uh, Jacqueline. You can uh, also look at the Conquering Southern China that's and a good Conquering one. Northern China documentaries. Like, the, if that's you go, us together. Yeah. yeah. If you just go to the Vimeo pages, it should have pictures of us. It does. Yeah. Uh, Jacqueline, hello from the Taiwanese Thanks, Romanian couple in the UK. Mm -hmm. Great work exposing the evil regime. Do you think cool. you can make a summarized video that we can show people that have no idea about the ccp to make them aware yeah like i said i think honestly i think my video for tomorrow will be a good one because it just very quickly summarizes how the ccp is affecting everyone i also think my video i just put out is perfect for that too. absolute it's yeah straight from the ground up history yeah. to modern day so just look at our most recent videos yeah. and you know law 86 serpents a day our <laughs> last videos yeah. check them out i've also got that one like how china's slowly killing us all which yeah. is probably yeah. a good one to look at with and like how, how china it all how up. china fucked up that one i did is about yeah. that stuff too yeah uh griffin you're out i followed surviving africa but i only recently binge watched all the videos cool super interesting stuff winston you and your dad are very brave thank you appreciate that good stuff yeah mm -hmm. uh trin off topic question for winston what do you think about deanford yeah. do you like them no i can't um, stand them you get this question quite often i do i kind of like him yeah i know people who aren't exposed to them like him that's how it works because you're not used to living it. imagine it's like the lowest class i keep saying this it's as if you're an american and there's a band in america where it's like some seriously low class juggalo types okay so what you're saying i was just about to say you're saying icp and what, yeah and what they do is they go out and they <laughs> sing about i don't know like cleaning a fish or something while stabbing someone in the toe and eating a worm and you're like why would anyone listen to that crap it's like it's redneck garbage but because it's so different for I people see. outside yeah. they're no, like oh it, yeah. it's cool it. the it's like basically just you know they know they, it's just putting on a show of this like really low class scum zef bullshit and it's like i don't would never associate with people like that so for me it's like why do people like this garbage but you know i get it i get it it's because you don't really get to know it it's you like get what you're saying yeah and i love american cars big time even though they're trash and that's simply <laughs> because i didn't have them growing up and i think they look cool when you, you own them for a while you start to realize why americans didn't really like american cars much because they just kind of badly put together i still love them you know what i mean do you know <laughs> do you know juggalos mm -hmm. have their own facebook called juggalo book <laughs> no. and me and my friend are having drinks in china and we made my wife into a juggalette Okay. And we painted her like one and made her a profile just to see what would happen. I guess Juggalo's hilarious. very similar to the Ardenfoot in, in a lot of ways. Yeah, I think you're probably right. It's like it's a marg thing. marginalized kind of hood rat type, but so, it's white culture. So, so imagine like uh, some French guy or whatever comes up to you. You're an American, right? And they're like, hey, man, I love Juggalos. What do you think of Juggalos? <laughs> That's exactly, what it's like when people exactly are like, hey, man, Dion Ford, love yeah. it. What do you think? Of it? It's the same thing. That's yeah. all I'm saying. No, I, I totally understand. And you're like, can people I'm, stop? I am fascinated why does, why, with Juggalos. Why, why do Juggalos represent my country? Remember we watched that Juggalo <laughs> yeah. documentary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's the same. It yeah. is. Zeph and Juggalo culture is very similar. Same thing. Same yeah. Thing. Did you, did you ever, <laughs> sorry to get off yeah. topic, did you ever see, what's his name that banged all those chicks and got AIDS or whatever? Oh yeah, the guy, what's his name? Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen, yeah, he, he went, went to the Juggalo yeah. show and they like, like chucked stuff, stuff at him. him. Yeah. He said he was a Juggalo. He's like a, yeah, he's a warlock, isn't he? He's yeah. a warlock, yeah. a Juggalo warlock. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, Guar, Guacre TM says, by the way, I'm getting a job at a boba shop. Cool. So I'll likely miss the live shows. Congratulations okay. on your new job. Yeah. I, I, every, I love everything about you guys, you guys do and make an effort to see your live shows uh, when Thank possible. You. you inspired me to interest myself in Asia and learn motorcycles. That's Fantastic. Awesome. And that's that. cool, man. Boba, Boba T, joining the Milk Tea Alliance. I like to hear that. Matthew Phillips says, thank you, ADV China, for featuring my dear leader. And he showed brown face. <laughs> He's <laughs> yeah. saying, didn't flying Justin Trudeau. Yeah. The proud feminist of Canada on your show. He's a paragon mm. of progressive excellence. Yes, didn't he say um, something about like, uh, what was it again? I like, don't follow some, Justin. He said something really stupid that made no sense. Really? Instead of like, um, 
history was like sheetery or something. <laughs> no, it's something along those lines, but it hadn't. It meant nothing. Let me see. Okay. He gendered something that didn't be gendered. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Nathan87, I'll wait while you... Yeah. Sorry, guys, I kind of screwed up that last super chat. The really important message that I wanted you to read was, my name is Sim Olk, and I think BTS sucks. He's putting words in Sim oh, okay. Olk's mouth. Um, Philip C, haven't heard you guys mention much control over divorce in China, 30-day cool-off period. We did. We talked about that. I guess you missed that episode, my friend. Love your work. Cheers. Uh, to counter Sim Olk, stream BTS. We got a huge monetized battle of BTS in our comments here. Oh, okay, cool. Guac Ray TM, one more thing before I miss all the podcasts. Uh, the fans, are you guys fans of City Pop other than Henri Shyness Boy? Can you give me suggestions? I'm poor now. Oh, chat, can you give suggestions? Yes, we do like City Pop. There and D, we appreciate y'all. What's up from Seattle? What up? Not a massive fan of your city, but it's not your fault. I love the people there, mm -hmm. most of them. Matthew Phillips says, in all seriousness, I wouldn't praise the prime feminist. Why is, what is the prime feminist? It's Justin Trudeau. Why is he a feminist now? I don't know. Who I'm cares? trying to find what he said. Oh, oh, yeah. To come to the she session and turn it into a she covery. Is that what he said? Instead of a recession. What? I think, yeah. Yeah, count to the she session and turn it into a she covering. Oh, that's why this feminist there. Okay. It's just some nonsense like what that. What the hell is he doing? No, but he done? said some other crap too, which is just also ridiculous. I can't remember. Whatever, it's petty. It he is. Plans, it's ridiculous. It's funny. Yeah. He plans to have the government... He said he doesn't... Oh, I knew that we were going to get people to say we shouldn't praise him. We're not praising him. We just think that move <laughs> is good, okay? It's good that he's... He uh, plans to have the government take over those property, properties from actual Canadian landowners to make the government run affordable housing whatever come on let's not nitpick here guys mm -hmm. mr uh, they appreciate that and i know that you're passionate about this and you're probably right uh mr james in blongington rome is better than de Coops, better than scold better than andy laplugia better than ramstein better than bts okay Wh whatever cool. say rock is, is rome a band probably de Coops. <laughs> whatever scold. yeah uh jay leo Oh, thank you for the German music suggestions, if that's yeah. what you're doing. We hope Taliban listened to two opinions of all ethnic groups and factions echoing aspirations of its people and expectations of international community. China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs said, do it to your own people first. <laughs> By the way, did, did we not call that those Ch China shills would start backing the Taliban? Did we not call that? Mm, guess what? A lot of them are. Yep. They're now starting to say how like, you know, reasonable it is to deal with the Taliban. And how much better it is what China's approach is. It's uh, terrible. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get into that at some point. Point out these bastards. Rum Runner. Did you hear about the Malaysian Chinese rapper Namoe? Yes, I did. Trolling mm -hmm. the CCP for his suggestions and the Taliban have not looked it up. Yes, yeah, it was we a did. good one. That's funny. Yeah. Jesse Bulks. Are Chinese students that are able to study abroad considered rich to their country mates? Yes. Mm, yes, they are. Definitely. You have to understand China is such a massive population. The percentage that get to study abroad is actually a very small percent. Even if you have millions of people, it's a 1.4 billion, you know, population. So a very, very, very small elite that get to go overseas and study. And that's why the majority of the ones that do go study overseas, the Florida's, are usually connected to government, um, you know, and some kind of communist official and, or something like that. Because they are the ones that are usually in the position to do this kind of thing. You know. Charles Womack says, when I type your names into Google, CML comes up as an actor and Winston as a YouTuber. Why is that? I don't know. Free Hong Kong doesn't really matter. Yeah, you know, he's, he's, he he only acts at being a YouTuber. It's not actually he doesn't actually do any of the editing. He's just a figurehead for whoever else does it in the background. You better t <laughs> tell some of these people that are not very good at sarcasm that you're joking. <laughs> some being sarcastic. I do everything myself. I know. Well, I shouldn't yeah. have to say that. I don't want to be autistic here. No, no, we, uh, we do I shouldn't everything have to explain ourselves. the joke. Well, th this is it. This is this is our team. It's all you get. This is a uh, you know everything we do. It's just the two of us. So no one else is involved. You can make it if you try. Just, <laughs> just the two of us. Free Hong Kong yeah. took my 350Z to the mechanic today after thinking my CV axle was shot. Apparently, the car is all good and it's just noisy. Time to celebrate. That's, okay. That's an interesting celebration. Yeah. Now okay, you have a cool. noisy 350. Cool. Um, nice car. How much how much oil does it drink? Yeah, it's nice Carson car. Carson Large. Uh, is, it is. Is there a place so we can see different pictures you guys use in your stream, like the illegal foreigner poster earlier? Uh, a lot of it you'll probably see on the subreddit. Once the yeah. subreddit grows, you'll see more of the material that we use in there. Yeah, we can put some of it in there yeah. for you guys as well. Ty Sloan says, thoughts on Xi and Biden apparently talking. Oh, I wrote a too lazy didn't read for the Xi, Xi Jinping Biden talk. Okay. I actually made one. Oh, did you? Was yeah. it Sigurd Jian Mian by any chance? 
Why? Well, well, I read all the transcripts. There it all is. The summary. Biden. Where is it? Okay. Too lazy didn't read. Biden says, we can agree on things like climate change, but we cannot agree on things like Taiwan, CCP. Everything has to be discussed together. Either agree on everything or nothing. That was what I got from it. Okay. <laughs> um, how do you think, sorry, Cam Max says, how do you think the CCP would handle a major recession? How would they pacify the public? Do you think a bridge too far for the people to handle? Yes. I That's think. the thing. That's what they've been gearing up to. If you mm. if you watched my video where I said, you know, has China just declared war? Breaking news. Um, if you watch that one, I went through this. This is what's going through, going through the media. Pe- they, people are putting out these speeches and these op-eds and things that are preparing the public for a downturn. Correct. And preparing them to blame the West for whatever problems they get. So they will sit there and they will tighten the belt and they will become poorer and poorer or more average and more average. But at the, at the same time, they won't blame the Chinese government for it. They will blame the outside world. Correct. And that's what the Chinese government wants because they don't want them to rebel against the government, which is actually the main cause for them losing money. Tai Slum says, will the next Japan PM prime minister be tough on China? Most likely. Mm-hmm. Tai Slum says, how come the China, Chinese government has Twitter accounts to spread Chinese propaganda yes, and the block only reason. their populace off from talking to the rest of the world? And Twitter, shame on you for allowing that. They block Twitter. There should be some, you should have some terms of services if they block Twitter from all of their actual citizens, citizenship, like everyone who's Chinese is not allowed to access Twitter. Why does the government get to access Twitter? That's not fair. You should yeah. allow Chinese people to have Twitter, but not the government. Yeah. The government that actually blocks Twitter should not be allowed on there. You should block them. Nelson Johnson says, Would you, what do you all use for two-way communication on your motorcycle? We use um, Senna. Senna. Um, H10. Intercoms. H10? Yeah, we, we've used a couple. We've, yeah. But Senna, SM, the main one. SMH10. SMHR. SMHR10. SMH10R. Yeah, SMHR 10s. Yeah. Shaking my head. Yeah, whatever. They're, <laughs> no, they're, my head they're great. Up. But that's not how we record the audio, by no. the way. We record it separately into our GoPro. GoPros. So we've got two microphones inside the helmet, one for the intercom, one it's for the GoPro. It's a trade secret. Yeah. It's not a trade secret. Yeah. Ty Slum, do you think China runs uh, ruins Hollywood to stay, save face? No. That's, mm-hmm. We explained explain that. Hector Backus, Winston, Winston, notice. Thanks, gift icon on your channel. Yeah, thanks. Oh, yeah. The, you know, I've got that little... Um, He's so lucky. He got that uh, That you can say thanks. You can give him tips. I didn't get that. Yeah, it's only just recently been enabled it's on sad. my channel. It's pretty awesome. Chinese Ox. Hi, chaps. Chinese Ox here. Mm-hmm. Please take down that footage of me. Thanks, Chinese Ox. Okay, Chinese Ox. <laughs> what? What? Oh, didn't you call someone an ox? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Is he in the UK now? <laughs> He, I mean, he's not going to find us. No. He'll have to bun- punch through the wall like a bobo. Because you know, he is a bobo. He'll go... Yeah. Grrr, and, and the barrels to do will start rolling. Throw a barrel yeah. at him, pick up a chain or whatever. Yeah. And whip we'll him. be all set. Yeah, we, we, know, we know how to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, I'll just wear blue. You have to wear red. Yeah, for yeah. sure. We got this. Yeah. Will India be a problem for bricks for China? Uh, yes, big time. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dark Brindarius, any whips coming soon? Yes. Don't oh, you worry. yes. RX7 Actually, potential? No, we got something else. We got some cool... Look... Um, We've actually stumbled a, a, across a really generous, nice guy who's allowed us to take a very cool car Don't out. Say what it We're is. not going to say what it is, but he's got more. We've than, already filmed it. He's got more than one car, and yes. so we may have more than one interesting car that we can at least go and test drive and film and talk about and maybe work on a little. We bit fell in love there. with this one. Yeah, it's it really cool. Uh, very special. Yeah, very very special car with a very special history coming up soon. Tiglith, is it possible to privately import cars from China? From China? Uh, probably. Why would you want to do that? Yeah. Why mm. would you ever, ever want to do that? You know, that? there was this thing. How many foreigners did you meet who thought, oh, they could just import a car Because they China? read the law. Like, I can import any car I want. What I'm going to do is import cars into China and get they can buy stuff that is really cool in the West that they can't and get. And they're also like, cars are so cheap <clears throat> secondhand so cheap, in yeah. the States or whatever. I'm, I'm just going to start a business. I'll buy them in the States and then import them in. Nope. No, you won't. No, you can't. It's well, We haven't met anyone. No. We only met one person that imported a car. Yeah, one it was, car. It was because and it was dodgy. I I know a guy <laughs> lived up in Dalian, and his father bought in a Porsche and a uh, that. Okay, w- so we know WRX, two people. But that's because his father's massively rich and was in in c- cahoots with uh, Borshi Lai. Oh my and gosh! He, so yeah. And he managed to bring in a container right. with everything that he wanted from overseas, completely unchecked by customs or anything. That's, that's China that's, for you. Yeah. So if you want to bring in a car, it can't be more than twelve years old. First of all, you're gonna pay like quadruple what it costs brand new. 
you're not going to get it in there. No. It doesn't work that way. China is so completely impossible to import a car into. We're already a half an hour over. Oh, okay. We better uh, Amri Jacquot. Uh, CCB ban 996 work routine. Real or propaganda? I'd say mostly propaganda. Propaganda. You Ty Sloan. You're not going to stop that. Why doesn't the West end China's firewall? I don't think that's possible. All you could do is cut them off, I suppose. Dark Rendaria says, loopy plus silly content brings out the immature child in me. Thanks for telling Good. me. <laughs> Light seeker. Guys, what's the deal with Dashan being on the down low? It looks like he's back in Canada now. Yeah, it's been really? for a while. He's oh. been, been in like Canada for a while. Yeah, I think oh. so. He probably just kind of ran out of steam. Yeah. Mm. Dark Rendarius, think apologies, thanks for your work and perspectives. What if we got Dashan on the channel? That'd be cool. <laughs> he would never go. He on. would that would end his entire career. It'd be worse than his blackface incident. It would be much worse. Oh no, Chinese ox! <laughs> 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 no! It's, it's actually Chinese, Chinese, Chinese it's a box here. Yeah. While I am indeed here, yeah. I was wondering <laughs> if you could name one positive thing Ryan has done for China. P.S. But it's down. <laughs> oh, no. Chinese ox. Don't worry, Chinese, Chinese ox. ox. One positive thing about Xi Jinping, I suppose, is that he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a positive. Yeah. Chinese ox, I'm deeply sorry for anything we have done to offend you. Yeah. Uh, we'll <laughs> refrain from using your footage in the future. Yeah. And I'm actually terrified right now. <laughs> Anna Ridgway, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Tai Slum says, thoughts on Wang Yi visiting Vietnam and Southeast Asia. They're trying to repair the ever-growing... Uh, cooperation between the or sort of trying to cut down the ever growing cooperation between Vietnam and the USA. Yeah. The relations just get better and better. Yeah. And they don't Southeast want that. Asia is pivoting against China. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ray G Productions says, I'm only super chatting because of that trash can Decepticon. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> the toilet one <laughs> yeah, is my d- favorite. D- 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 yeah. I can't wait to see that something come out of that. John W., why do, you, why do people think that Simu Liu looks like a younger version of Ryan the Pooh? I saw that. It's all over TikTok. He doesn't look anything like Xi Jinping. No. No, he doesn't. Ryan the Pooh. I guess yeah. we can just start calling him Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. Uh, click all night. I order cheap stuff from AliExpress, sometimes thinking that the Chinese manufacturer is doing their best and doesn't deserve boycott just because the CCP sucks. I, I mean... Whatever, sure. But... Yeah. No, yeah. unfortunately, every single thing that you buy from those companies, first of all, is uh, f- from AliExpress. It's to the detriment of whoever designed that thing in the first place because yeah. it's definitely just a cheap copy of something. But... On top of that, every single cent that goes into those companies goes into the Chinese economy and goes into supporting the Chinese Communist Party and the growth of its military and the growth of what's going on over there right now. So just think about it from a point of view that, uh, from a moral point of view, first of all, you would get something that's better quality if you bought a a well-known brand. You would. And on top of that, you could support someone else instead of the CCP. They've given too much support up until this point. Well said. We are way over time. Okay. Uh, Aaron Steger, two decent beers for me. Uh, two great dudes. Thank you Thank very you. much. Wing083 says, can you guys do a meme review of your subreddit? We should have. Can you write that down? Okay. We'll do. Meme review yeah, got it. Uh, of our subreddit would be hilarious. People love when YouTubers do that. So, okay. uh, Seamilk, who is your favorite re- member of Red Velvet? Uh, my favorite's Irene. Oh, you said Irene as well. Irene for the win. Agreed. Who, who doesn't like Irene? When I, you, I, when I liked what Girls Generation, like. I was a fan of Yuna. Uh, Ty Sloan, what happens if Tibet and others break from China? Uh, they will not. That will never happen. <laughs> no. It's not even hypothetical. No. Poxy303, thank you very much. Sleepy Doodle, you guys should play one BTS song made in Mandarin called Boy in Love, Chinese version. You should play it for Xi Jinping. Or Ryan, sorry. How about you <coughs> play it? I don't know that song. I know like three of their songs, maybe. Yeah. Um, Kutz Nunt. Hi, Winston, fellow expat here in Canada. Have you become a gun owner yet? A few hurdles to jump through, but it's great fun once you're there. Uh, you know, that's that's neither here nor there, basically. None of your business. <laughs> uh, Marit Strip Matter, love you guys in a, in a send-off. Uh, Zheng Siyao, uh, Yi Sao, sorry, is the best pirate ever, especially because of how often does a woman ma- uh, command an armada. Remember that? She was the Chinese woman that yes. was the pirate queen. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, a. Watson, would you think that China would praise the English st- a student saying you will make a great spy one day? I mean, in a way, yeah. Maybe. Robert Lopez, Lamau trash truck to <laughs> trash bag. Dude, that's very generous of you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got to see that. <laughs> Kevin Raper. Please tell me that's not your real name. No, it's. I mean, it's probably pronounced like Raper or something. I, I, I had a friend with the last name Whore. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. But H-O-A-R-E. Yeah, but still it's Whore. Yeah. And I felt bad. So I hopefully, Kevin Raper, you didn't have to go through that your but whole life. But the thing is, like I've said this before, he had every opportunity to tell people that it was pronounced Huare. Yeah, Huare. But he said, no, it's whore. So I was <laughs> and like, Kevin Raper, so you could be him, like, Hlape. I used to ask him, how's Mrs. Whore today? 
and how the little whores. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin has the same opportunity, right? He could be like, it, it probably is something like that. Yeah, but what maybe if it's a silent, what if No, it's a rape. Maybe, maybe it's a silent <laughs> R, a silent no. P. So it's just R. <laughs> it's just rape. Kevin R. No, just. The R is silent. It's just rape. It's. <laughs> <laughs> no, we ate. It's just a. <laughs> a I'm sorry, yeah. Kevin. No, but oh, seriously, I apologize man, if that's your real name. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> what if he? <laughs> so, just... He only rapes Kevin's. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! The poor guy's probably had to deal with this kind of crap his whole life, and now he's just bringing back these memories. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh but my you're, gosh. You're sorry, I'm you sorry. know what? Do you tie your shoes. You think I didn't hear that my whole life? You want to have some Thai food? Uh, yeah. Bow tie, he's say to me. Bow tie. Um, that sounds lame. Black yeah. Halo 6, the Decepticon she being a garbage truck transforming into a garbage day made by Pepsi <laughs> come out of my nose. Yeah. yeah I exactly. like the toilet better, but apparently the yeah. garbage... I think it's kind of cool. He becomes a garbage bag, it's just a bag full of shit and flies are buzzing <laughs> around it and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, geez. Uh, Ty Salem, you're right about Japan. A lot of porn there. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Um, you know, that's the only Asian country that had a big uh, pornography industry. And so, of course, if you're Chinese, you, you want to see... Um, hide your Kevins. Yeah. <laughs> we, hide your Kevins. Stop. Okay, so okay. You, what you need to do is, uh, you know, you're Chinese. You want someone that looks like you, right? So you're watching, I guess, Western pornography must be a little weird because no one's looking like you. So Japanese, at least the same same kind of look, you know? True. Same kind of genetics. So. Uh, Zidfader. Oh, we forgot. We got to yeah. give him the green screen. For, write that down. Okay. It's written. It's written. Okay. We got to get the green screen for the you memes because that'll do. be part of that. We can We can actually just take a couple of shots and put them on the subreddit. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And guys, get ready. We'll do a, a meme review, whole episode of meme review, if you guys pump the memes out on the subreddit. Awesome. It'd be fantastic. Uh, DJM says, hello. Oh, my gosh. There it is. Uh, long time watcher, first time donator. I missed the part of the podcast, but I'm wondering, what do you think will happen to Chinese idols currently promoting in South Korea? I think they'll be cracked down, though. Yeah, and thank you for thank you. Um, your contribution. Oboe Queen 27 Winnipeg, Canada, has a level four lab and some research scientists from China dismissed a few months ago before the pandemic start started. Spies? Could be. Mm. Never know. I wouldn't know. Mahi Li Kuda. Don't insult BTS. They did nothing wrong to you. They're pretty wholesome, to be honest. I didn't. I stuck <laughs> up for that. Why are you only looking at the negatives? <laughs> he made fun of them, and that's fine. I didn't make I fun. I stuck up for them. Did I make fun of them? I made fun of the Plastic Boy. It's not the whole band. I don't even know what the other guys look like. He's G-Men. He's the the darling child. <laughs> Everyone loves G-Men. Like, yeah, really? He's like <laughs> Longman? No. He's just not. <laughs> See? You're going to it again. No, I'm just saying. Like, and these, he, They're very sensitive. I, I got you. I got you. No, he's, yeah. he's a very handsome guy. He just looks plasticky to me, is it? In that photo. He, yes. yes. And that's the only photo I've seen of him. So, you there know, you maybe go. he looks really non-plastic in other ones. You sure. Know? Mm. Ty Slum, you really saved your ass there. Mm -hmm. Ty Slum, do you think Japan needs to manufacture more stuff? Probably. I, I would love it. Ben B. I've still got stuff from the 80s, you know, which is, to be honest, that was Japan's boom. And from the 80s, it works great. Like, I've got a, a Sony, 1984 Sony tape deck, you know, the two tapes. It's perfect. It's awesome. I love it. Ben B. asks, what bike would you su suggest for a first-time motorcycle buyer? We don't have to answer that here because you can go to an entire dedicated episode literally ADV about China. what should be your first motorcycle. Type yes. in ADV China, first motorcycle. Yeah, and we talked about it at length. And we debated Yes. Light Seeker, you guys thought on the PRC company Evergrande Group's imminent collapse. We're going to cover that next time. Yeah, that's huge. We're keeping yeah. an eye on it. It's really a big thing. It's it really... in the midst of it, so we don't cover things, mm. you know, unless they're guaranteed. And, you know, China's banning uh, certain cities from lowering property prices. Yes. Have you seen that? Yep. And it's... actually putting uh, ceilings on other ones like yeah. Guangzhou. Some guy with a name. Thank you very much. Tai Salom. Does Japan, China hate Japan because of cultural history? Yes. yes. Rape of Nanjing. Look it up. It's horrible. Yeah, it's Japan awful. Really I mean, Japan did some really terrible things yes. to, Disgusting. well, not only China, but the whole world during that yeah. time. Yeah, Japan um, really turned around, <laughs> turned you know, over a new leaf. The fact of the matter is that Japan never properly apologized, according to the Chinese Communist Party, for the atrocities that happened during World War II. But it's actually mainly a scapegoat. <clears throat> Because it's very convenient for them to turn on the tap of hate and nationalism whenever they are making mistakes. I'm talking about the Communist Party of China. And they just need to point fingers at Japan and say something about it. And everyone loses 
their focus and gets angry about Japan. And that's why Correct. day in and day out on TV, you see anti-Japanese TV shows every single day about Japanese people doing terrible things to, uh, you know, Chinese peasants or whatever, and all that kind of thing. You can, if you ever turn on the TV in China, you'll see what I mean. Iski says, hey guys, uh, Eagerfish Japan will send you footage of NHK last week. That's Japan's news. Okay. Uh, he wants us to know the ADV reported sissy pants before... Oh. Uh, before NHK. Oh, cool. That's cool. Uh, bad, sad, so good stuff. Love stories from South Africa. Cool. I'm glad. If you <sighs> haven't checked out my dad's channel, it's called Surviving Africa. And uh, if you want to hear all about my dad's adventures when he was younger with crocodiles and snakes and lions and stuff, you know. Aaron Steger says, screw it. Matt pronounced my name right. Thanks. You're welcome. You know who I didn't pronounce right? It's probably Kevin Raper. Yeah. Track Media only. I hate yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ha hate to admit it. <clears throat> I've not watched in a while. Have you no ever worries. done videos on your opinions of companies like Tencent, video games, video game development companies in the West and their growing influence? A little bit. We've touched yeah. on it. Yeah, we have. Mostly on this show, probably. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Ty Slum says, popular economics still say invest in China. Yeah, which they should not. Stop giving mm. your money to an authoritarian dictatorship that's just out there to <clears throat> grow its military and to actually put an end to the freedom that you oh. enjoy. You know? Stop. To strike absolute fear into us right before we end the podcast, our last one says, from Chinese Ox, <laughs> says, I will show you Chinese Ox manners. Oh, no, no, wait, we got this. Where is it? I'll tell you why I thought Chinese manners were bad enough. Chinese yeah. Ox manners is something I do not want to learn. You know who needs to learn some Chinese Ox manners? Bust that. <laughs> true that, true that. Yeah. Uh, and then Jennifer says, if Winston thinks G-Men looks plastic, then please Google Ali London. All right, we'll let's take a look. I'm gonna. Do we gotta that. go. Okay, one second. I gotta see what this oily London guy is. Oily, Ali. Okay, Ollie London. Uh, oh yes, he's the guy who who he changed oh, himself to look into like a, a K-pop star. I'll tell you what, Ali. I apologize, but you don't don't look Korean. <laughs> no, that's nightmare <laughs> fuel. No, oh, you no. actually look awful. Oh, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, no. Woo anyway. That was that was striking fear into me before the end of the episode. Yeah, that's scarier that's, than Ox Man. Yeah, it is. Maybe not. Fantastic, guys. Thank you so much. We had a very long Q and A today, but uh, it's so nice to interact with you again. This is an important conversation we have every week. We're kind of on the cutting edge of what's going on. It's something that affects everyone. So happy to have you here. Good to have you discuss what we discuss here on the show with other people. Spread the word a little bit, you know what I mean? But more importantly, just have a fantastic weekend. Uh, we can't wait to see you in the next one. And uh, I'm not going to cut myself off the sun. Did I cut myself off last time? Yes. I thought I didn't. <laughs> okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the countdown again. Okay, so here we go. Five. Oh, yeah, and stay awesome. Four. Uh, yeah, there we go. Four. I'm getting all confused here. Three, 